Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, we have collated the submitted uh, proposed amendments. And we can maybe ask the Secretariat to flash the said document. The Secretariat is requested as ordered. Floor leader, are you ready with the period of amendments? Yes, Mr. Speaker, but we propose that uh, we go through the provision, the provisions uh, proposed to be amend amended. And this has been, uh, there is a matrix for this, and we propose to present the matrix instead of uh, this. <laughs> Matrix of proposed amendments to go together with the name of the proponent. Yes, Mr. Speaker. The matrix will show the proposed amendments, Mr. Speaker, and the member of the parliament uh, who proposed the say the said amendments and the uh, chair of the committee on rules uh, will state yeah, whether the, the, pro the procedure is the chair of the committee of the proponents of the, or the chair of the committee on rules will just uh, indicate whether okay. or not she accepts or rejects the yes, uh, the proposed amendments this is to save on time yes mr speaker One minute suspension. Mr. Speaker, uh, I think they cannot send the document because uh, there's no internet connection. So, session one suspended for minute. one minute.
explain mo na lang na so so mr speaker um we're presenting the matrix showing the proposed amendments So only those parts which are proposed to be amended will be read, uh, specifically the proposed amendments. And then uh, the proponent will respond. Speaker, one more minute. Just give us one more Session minute. suspended for one minute. So, Mr. Speaker, we go to the first article, which would cover introductory provisions, specifically Section 3, uh, on the Declaration of Principles. Um, MP Ampatuan proposes to change uh, the word electorate into voter uh, under paragraph C of said section. Mr. Speaker. So what is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, we do not accept the proposed amendment, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note. We proceed to the next uh, proposed amendment. Okay, on Section 5, Mr. Speaker, uh, with respect to the definitions, uh, particularly Paragraph B, uh, there is a proposal uh, to change Commission and Bank to Comelec Commission on Election (parenthesis Comelec close parenthesis and Bank). Mr. Speaker, the Mr. Proponent. Spe Mr. Speaker, for para uh, paragraph B, we accept with modification, Mr. Speaker, to um, read Comelec and Bank, not the. Word as spelled, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note. The proponent has accepted the proposed amendment. With, With modification. modification. So instead of commission on election, parenthesis, comelec, close parenthesis, it's just comelec, comelec and bank. That's commission on elections. Oh, Mr. Speaker, may I be recognized? That's my proposal. Um, the reason why I put commission on election, Madam, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that this is the first time that the word COMELEC is being used. So you need to spell out what COMELEC is. This is the first time I in the entire, entire provision of the bill or the, the, the law or the bill. Um, Mr. Speaker, this is the first time that, uh, the word COMELEC is being used. Mr. Speaker, in that case, we reconsider, Mr. Speaker. It is accepted, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note. The proponent has accepted the uh, justification of the proponent of the amendment. 
Okay, on uh, paragraph C, Mr. Speaker, the proposal coming from MP Ampatuan is to spell out Bangsamore Organic Law before the acronym BOL. Mr. Speaker, Proponent. we accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note. And then on paragraph G, uh, to spell uh, to take out the acronym BOL after the words Bangsamoro Organic Law, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker, because it has already been uh, shortened by acronym of BOL, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, may I explain? Mr. Speaker, the reason why... Um, I do not use the word, uh, the acronym is because we are citing a specific provision uh, in the BOL, Mr. Speaker. Proponent? Mr. Speaker, we maintain that we do not accept, Mr. Mm -hmm. Speaker. Uh, Secretary, take note the proponent did not accept the justification of the proponent of the amendment. Let's Mr. proceed. Mr. Speaker, we go to the proposal coming from MP Lim. Uh, which is to add a paragraph, letter G, uh, to include independent candidate. It will read, independent candidate refers to a person running for a parliamentary district seat, but who is not affiliated to a registered for regional party or coalition. We what? accept, Mr. Speaker. It's accepted. Uh, the amendment. Secretariat, please take note. And then uh, coming from another proposal, proposed amendment, Mr. Speaker, coming from MP Ishak Mastura, which is to add a, a separate paragraph on propos proportional representation. It shall read uh, this way. Proportional representation, it is an electoral system in which the distribution of seats corresponds with the proportion of the total votes cast for each party. Mr. Speaker, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note. Take note that the proponent did not accept the proposed amendment. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, with respect to Section 4 of Article 2, I think, um, there's a proposal coming from MP Ampatuan. Uh, particularly with respect to paragraph C, to change the regional regional party to read regional political party, inserting the word political, Mr. Speaker. Proponent? We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, take note the proponent has accepted the proposed amendment of MPM Patuan. With respect to section 7, Mr. Speaker, on the uh, section on budget, there's a proposal coming from MP Don Loong uh, to delete the last uh, portion of the first paragraph, which reads, provided that the reserve fund shall not exceed the allocated maintenance and other operating expenses of the BEO for that election year. We accept, Mr. Speaker. You accept. Secretariat, please take note, the proponent has accepted the proposed amendment of uh, the gentleman from Sulu MP, Don Long. And under Article 3, Mr. Speaker, uh, coming from MP Ampatuan, there's a proposal to uh, provide more details on the uh, requirements for the establishment of a political party uh, pertaining to Mr. Speaker, if I may, um, I actually deleted that. Uh, deleted. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if we can understand the Secretary, but si Rab knows it. Uh, instead of using the entire, because that was already proposed under the committee and it was already reject, rejected, uh, I had a counter proposal which indicates that it's 5,000 instead of the 10,000. So it's and it's not one thousand as appears in the first paragraph. It is based on the original um, uh, draft bill, original um, section that uh, 
uh, is provided in the clean copy. So instead of 10,000, I, I counter propose for 5,000 so and not the entire because it, this was already reje rejected at the committee level. Okay, so 5,000, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note the proponent, the author or the proponents do not accept the proposed amendment of MP of the lady from Maguindano. Pwede bang mag-object? Pwede naman siguro mag-object yung, that, that, that's a proposal and there's a counter proposal and I have the right to counter, uh, to, to reject also the, the proposal. Uh, there is no counter proposal. We just maintain and uh, stick by the language in the code. I mean, Bill, Mr. The counter proposal is uh, instead of 10,000, it's 5,000. 5, One minute suspension. Session resumes.
we have a situation where the proponent of amendment insists on her proponent, and the only remedy here is to uh, divide the house. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, I move that um, we divide the house, Mr. Speaker. On the proposed, uh, on the proposed amendment of the proponent of the uh, amendment. Mr. Speaker, I think the other proposals are similar. This is on the matter of uh, the minimum number of members uh, in order for a regional political party to have itself registered. So maybe we can vote on the all the other uh, proposals, all of them uh, proposing to amend Section 1 um, and requiring only 5,000 instead of 10,000 as a requirement for the number of members. So we will vote that the proponent uh, rejects all proposed amendments on this uh, specific provision. Yes, Mr. Speaker, my understanding is uh, the object, uh, the rejection or not accepting the proposal covers all the other proposals uh, where 5,000 instead of 10,000 is the minimum requirement, Mr. Speaker. Okay, we will proceed. We will proceed to divide the house. All of those in favor of one minute suspension. Uh, before we
divide the house on specific provision of art. What article is that? Section 1, Mr. Speaker. Article 2. Uh, Art 3, 3, sorry. Article 3, Section 1. Yes. Article 3, Section 1. The question is, all of those who, in, who are in favor of retaining the current language of Section 1, Article 3, will they, they will raise their hand. Uh, all of those not in favor, they will also uh, uh, raise their hands. All of those, uh, we will now proceed to voting. All of those not, all of those in favor of retaining, yes, uh, uh, I think, can he? Yeah. With your due indulgence, I think before we vote, you state what is the, what is the provision that will be voted, not just the original proposition as stated in section three. You should say you should say it in there. You should say that this this the provision which reads section three with the provision which reads, and then we we proceed to vote. Yeah, the problem or, is I can can no longer see the provision here in my screen. Ah because of the uh technical difficulties. Then we allow the secretariat to read. Or the floor leader. So, Mr. Speaker, the question would be, uh, all those who are in favor of retaining uh, the 10,000 requirement for the registration of political parties as provided in Section 1, Article 3, raise, should raise their hands. Okay. May we may we uh may we ask the secretariat to read section 1 article 3. Mr. Speaker, di ba mas madali kung who are in favor ng proposed amendment ko or kaysa ah, marami? Okay. Mr. Speaker, can I just read? Because yeah, it's you can read. Uh, we will allow the floor leader to read. Okay, uh, section one, establishment of regional political parties. Regional political parties in the Bangsamoro, herein after parties or party, shall be established by at least 10,000 members who are residents and registered voters therein. The members shall be distributed throughout the different provinces and cities comprising the Bangsamoro territory, provided that all parties shall establish provincial and city chapters in all provinces and cities, and municipal chapters in the majority of the municipalities comprising each province in the Bangsamoro. Provided further that a provincial chapter is required to have municipal chapters in majority of the municipalities in that province. Uh, there you have it. We will now proceed with the division of the house. All of those in favor of retaining the current language of Section 1, Article 3, please raise your hands. Secretariat, please count.
What's that? <clears throat> Gordon. Gordon. Okay. Next. Please, uh, tapos na yung sa first question. All of those in favor of not all of those not in favor of retaining the current language of Section One, Article Three. Please raise your hands. So the current language, the uh, the current language holds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There are other proposals, but since we have already voted on retaining the uh, language of Section One. We shall forego all the other proposed amendments. I think that is the consequence of the voting if the uh, proponent maintains its position on the current language. Okay, so Mr. Speaker, can we go to the succeeding sections? Okay, because we are retaining the first, uh, the language of section one. So can we now go to section two? Which is on uh, 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 what? section two, registration of regional political parties. Uh, there's a proposal coming from MT Mastura saying that the party registration should follow the provisions on registration of political parties as provided in Republic Act 7491 or the Party List System Act uh, in section five thereof, which is consistent with us with section seven, article nine C of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, we do not accept. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, the I proponent object. of the amendment. I object and I, I call for a division of the House on this provision. There is a, there is a move to divide the House on that specific, what specific provision? Section 3? Section 2 of Article section, 3. Section 2, Article 3. One minute suspension.
proceed with the division of the House. Those who are in favor of amending Section 2, Article 3, raise your hands. Tatlo. Apat. Those who are not in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Secretariat, do we have a result on the vote? Yes, Mr. Speaker. For the result of the votations on Article 3, Section 2, for those in favor of the amendments, we have four votes. For those who are not in favor of uh, the amendments, we have 57 votes. The, uh, yes, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the no's have it. The no's have it. So we retain the current language of Section 3. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Section, uh, Section 2, Section Article, two 3. Article 3. Article uh, 3. Mr. Speaker, we go to Section 4. Uh, there's a proposal coming from MP Alamia, M. Alamia, particularly in relation to uh, Paragraph 1. Uh, this pertains to the requirements for registration of regional political parties. Siba or 1? Okay, there's a proposal to include this uh, paragraph. For the first BARM parliamentary elections, 6% of its members may consist of actual members of underrepresented and marginalized groups as reflected in the party's official membership book with each of the following sectors consisting of at least 1%. Non-Moro Indigenous Peoples, Settler Communities, Women, Youth, Traditional Leaders, and the Ulama. Mr. Speaker. The proponent, what is uh, your position on the amendment, proposed amendment? I, I think, Mr. Speaker, for one and two. Okay, for number two, Mr. Speaker, there's another uh, paragraph being proposed to be included. And this reads, for the succeeding BARM parliamentary elections, 12% of its members must consist of actual members of underrepresented and marginalized groups as reflected in the party's official membership book with each of the following sectors consisting of at least 2% uh, non-Moro indigenous people, settler communities, women, youth, traditional leaders, and the ulama. And uh, under paragraph D... Okay, so those are the first uh, two proposed amendments in relation to Section 4, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, for paragraphs uh, 1 and 2, which are hi highlighted, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note. And then, uh, Mr. Speaker, for under letter D, uh, there's a proposal to include a subparagraph. Or insert uh, the phrase, its official logo, so that such paragraph will read the party's full name, its abbreviation, if any, its official logo, and its 
principal place of business which must be in any one of the provinces of the Bangsamoro. The next paragraph will also include uh, official logo in the sentences in the second paragraph, uh, the next two sentences in the next paragraph, Mr. Speaker. We what accept, what? we accept, Mr. Speaker. The proponent accepts. Please take note, Secretariat. Okay. On the same section, Mr. Speaker, there's a proposal coming from... Ah, yun rin, no? uh, there's a proposal coming from MP Ambatuan uh, proposing to delete the number of uh, members in paragraph C so that the paragraph will read a notarized list of members of the party without mentioning how many uh, members are included in the list. We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note. The proponent did not accept the proposed amendment. Okay. On Section 5 uh, of the same article, Mr. Speaker, there's a proposal to include under Paragraph A, a proviso that reads, uh, provided that the committee must be composed of at least 50% women and at least 25% sectoral members. And then for Paragraph B, uh, the insertion of another proviso, provided that the committee must be composed of at least one woman and one sectoral member. Under paragraph C, the uh, inclusion of another proviso that reads, provided that the committee must be composed of at least 50% women and with at least one member from each reserved seat sector. Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Meron pa po. Yata. Uh, Who is then, the proponent of this proposed amendment? MP Alamian, Mr. Speaker. And then on paragraph D, uh, the insertion of another proviso that reads, provided that the committee must be composed of at least 50% women and with at least one member from each reserve sec seat sector. Mr. Speaker, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note, the proponent did not accept the proposed amendments. Okay. Uh, pertaining to the same section, Mr. Speaker, there's a, a proposal coming from MP Ampatuan to include a paragraph requiring a women's committee which ensures that women's representation as well as gender and development agenda are considered by all committees and chapters of the political party. I think that's the only one, no? That's the insertion. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, uh, we accept with modification, Mr. Speaker, letter G, to read a women and youth committee, which ensures that women's and youth's representation, as well as women and youth agenda, are considered by all committees and chapters of the political party, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note, the proponent accepts with modification the proposed amendments. Happy Women's Month. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on Section 6, there's a proposal coming from MP Mawalil to include um, two paragraphs, the second paragraph. Two sentences. Uh, the sentences that read that read this way: All regional political parties shall ensure that women and youth are duly represented in their roster of officers. This shall be reflected in its constitution and bylaws, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent, Mr. Speaker? We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note. The proponent accepts the proposed amendments. Okay, Mr. Speaker, coming to Section 9, there's a proposal from uh, MP Alamia under Paragraph B uh, to, in to increase the percentage of party nominees 
uh, who are women from 30% to 50%, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Uh, Mr. Speaker, can we also look at the other provisions okay. and uh, then highlighted, uh, Mr. Speaker? In paragraph D, uh, there's a proposal to amend it so that it reads this way. Any person who is not found in the latest membership book of the political party submitted to the BEO, provided members who joined the party within six months before an election will not be eligible for nomination as party representative under the new party or organization. And uh, paragraph E, the list of nominees shall be arranged in chronological order of their nomination as party representatives alternating between male and female. However, the list of nominees as submitted to the BEO shall be without prejudice to the power of a party to determine who can sit among its nominees and to unseat any party member sitting in the parliament for breach of party loyalty or violation of party rules uh, or policies. And under letter G, um, to for it to read this way, nominations in violation of paragraphs B, C, D, and E uh, above shall be denied the course by by denied due course by the BEO, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. The proponent did not accept. Uh, Secretariat, please take note. There's another proposal coming from MP Ampatuan, Mr. Speaker, pertaining to paragraph B, which also proposes to change 30% to 40%. Um, of the list of nominees uh, to be women, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we maintain the thirty uh, percent in the original in the back, Mr. Speaker. We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to divide the house. There is a motion to divide the house. The question is, those who are in uh, uh, session suspended. There is a motion to divide the house. The question will be those who are in favor. Question resumes. Ah, okay. Se session suspended. We will divide the house. Those who are in favor of amending section, uh, what section is that? Section 9, Mr. Speaker. Section 9 of Article 3, uh, from 30% to 40%, raise your uh, Mr. hands. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Um, if I may, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that we don't make a circus out of this uh, issue, Mr. Speaker, please um, take note that the original bill number 29 talks about 10%. 30% as uh, increased in the bill is a critical mass and it is already, uh, it is a significant uh, difference from 10%. Just it is a milestone Mr. already. It is a milestone for the women's. Uh, advo advocate. Um, Mr. Speaker, may I be also given one minute? 
I'll give you 30 seconds. 30 seconds, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if we place 30% right now, it's only 12 seats, Mr. Speaker. And there is no assurance that that 12 seats will be uh, given to women. Why? Because as stated in the, in the draft, um, it doesn't follow that when you give 30%, that the 30% of the list of the party list is are all women, Mr. Speaker. So if that political party gets only uh, 10 seats, 10 seats, so that's the, um, the, the chance is that no among from that 10 seat uh, is, is a woman, Mr. Speaker. And so there is really no assurance that we can get a seat uh, with that kind of wordings, Mr. Speaker. We, we, uh, Secretary, please take note of the positions. We will now proceed with the division of the House. Those who are in favor of the amendment from 30% to 40%, raise your hands. We only have four votes. Those who are not in favor of, of the proposed amendments, please raise your hands. Secretariat, do you have the results? Mr. Speaker, here is the result of the division of the House of the Article 3, Section 9. For those in favor of the amendments, we have four votes. For those who are not in favor of the amendments, we have 51 votes. The those who are not in favor have uh, prevailed. Pro, floor leader. Yes, on the same uh, provision, Mr. Speaker, uh, there is a proposal coming from MP Don Loong to add another paragraph after paragraph D, which shall read this way: In case of dispute or disagreement between or among the nominees disqualified. Under the immediately preceding paragraph, the concerned party shall settle the dispute by a coin toss or drawing of lots, whichever is applicable. Mr. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. The sec Secretariat, please take note. The proponent did not accept the proposed amendment. Floor leader, let's proceed. Yes, Mr. Speaker. We go to section 14. Uh, this is a proposed new provision. Actually, it's a whole set of provisions pertaining to party subsidy fund, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. The equivalent provision in the uh, bill, Mr. Speaker, says that the parliament may establish a political party subsidy fund pertaining to an act of parliament in the future. But here there's a proposal to provide for a political party subsidy fund, Mr. Speaker. It goes from section 14 up to, can you go up? I think, can, so it's the establishment of a BARM political party subsidy fund. Section 15, requirements for certification. Next. 
Section 16, effects of certification. Section 17, mandatory voter education activities. Uh, and require, uh, and this will be connected to the development fund. And then public funding for party development activities. A section on public funding for campaign expenditures. A section on the use of public funding for party development activities. Section 21, management of the subsidy. Section 22, audit of the fund. Section 23, full disclosure. Section 24, other reports, Mr. Speaker. And section 25, failure to comply with disclosure and reporting requirements. Mr. Speaker, if I may. Yes, uh, the proponent of the proposed amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, based on the interpolation that we did yesterday, Mr. Speaker, this proponent of the amendment and the proponent of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code has already agreed. Uh, uh, that, and I have mentioned that I'm submitting these provisions uh, to be considered as part of the bill that would be passed, that would pertain uh, on solely on political party subsidy fund, Mr. Speaker. So you are withdrawing this proposal? I am amendment. withdrawing this proposal, Mr. Secretary, Secretariat, take note, the proponent of the proposed, uh, proposed amendment has withdrawn his proposal. Mr. Speaker, we go to Article 4. The, the gentleman from Lumba Bayabao is raising his hands. Yes, uh, MP uh, Mit Mug. Mr. Speaker, may meron kaming proposal kanina yung sa, sa, anong tawag nito, sa thresholds. What? Uh, yung, uh, yung, propose, yung proposed amendment for the thresholds for amendments. Wala pa yun. Okay, thank you. So can we proceed to Article 4, Mr. Speaker? Secretariat, please uh, flash on the screen. Okay, Article uh, 4, Mr. Speaker, particularly Section 4, um, coming from MP Mastura, pertaining to vacancy in the Parliament. Uh, there's a proposal to include a paragraph that reads this way. The grounds for disqualification of the members of Parliament shall be the same grounds for disqualification of representatives of the House of Representatives of the Philippines under existing national laws and the 1987 Philippine Constitution. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note, the proponent did not accept the proposed amendment of uh, the gentleman from Sultan Kudarat Magidano. Floor leader, we will proceed. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, we will go to Section 7. Uh, this pertains to coalitions and, and a proposal coming from MP Romeo Sema uh, is, is to amend the first paragraph of the same of the said section to delete the phrase or party, Mr. Speaker, so that it only reads accredited regional political parties, local political parties, and sectoral organizations. I think that should be a plural, uh, either for election or political purposes. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note, the, pro the proponent has accepted the proposed amendment. Okay. Floor leader, we the, proceed. The same section, Mr. Speaker, there's a proposal coming from MP Lorena. Um, and it reads this way, a coalition of regional political party 
for the purpose of local elections only, uh, thereby deleting the political purpose. Ay, sorry. Uh, only for local elections. And then another paragraph, a coalition of regional political parties, party and a sectoral organization for the purpose of sectoral representation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we accept with modification, Mr. Speaker. To read, in case of a coalition, and I think this is the thought. Please, uh, let us hear the, the modification to the proposed amendment. Yes, because I think this is the thought of uh, MP Lorena um, when he mentioned it to us. And in case of a coalition between a regional party and a local political party, the regional, polit the regional political party can field nominees in the party seats while such coalition can field candidates for the local elections. In case of a coalition between a regional political party and a sectoral organization, the regional political party can field candidates for the party seats, while such coalition can field candidates for the sectoral representatives. So, uh, Secretariat, please take note. The proponent has accepted the proposed amendment with modifications. Mr. Speaker, we go to Section 8. And this pertains to party representatives. So the proposal, Mr. Speaker, comes from MP Don Loong. Um, and it reads this way. Any person holding a public appointed office or position, uh, including active members of the armed forces of the Philippines and other officers and employees of in government-owned or controlled corporations shall be considered ipsa facto resigned from the office and must vacate the same at the start of the regular office hours of the day of the filing of the certificate of nomination and acceptance of nomination. For purposes of this section, a public officer holding a public appointive office or position shall be deemed to include private citizens appointed to public offices representing the private sector, Mr. Speaker. We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, can I just have one minute? Yeah, we will hear you. Mr. Speaker, during the deliberations, the interpellations, the floor leader mentioned the resolution of COMELEC as basis. And I have checked that resolution that is dated 2013. And I am uh, reading the resolution dated 2015 and dated 2021 for the 2022 elections. And it states... Same section eight, effects of acceptance of nomination. And this is for party list nomination. Any person holding a public appointed office or position, including the AFP, other officers, shall be considered ipso facto resigned from the office and must vacate the same at the start of the day of the filing of certificates of nomination for acceptance. For purposes of this section, a public officer holding a public appointed office or position shall be deemed to include private citizens appointed to public offices representing the private sector. Uh, the provision I have uh, forwarded is cut and paste from the resolution 9984 dated 2015 and resolution 10717 dated uh, 2021. So I am worried that we would be passing a law that would contravene two recent resolution and we would be sticking to the 2013 uh, resolution. Of course, I understand the concern about members of parliament. Actually, there, there is a provision that uh, uh, we can put uh, a provision there that uh, this will not apply to members of parliament for the 2025 elections. But then if we uh, use the same Section 8, we will be going against the provision of two re recent resolutions of the COMELEC. Mr. The, the floor leader. Mr. Speaker, to um, verify the content of the contents of the COMELEC resolution being referred to, May we ask for a one minute suspension? One minute suspension.
Human resumes have the proponents to the bill and the proponents to the amendment agreed on something. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, as much as I would like to accept the concept that uh, we will have a brain drain, uh, in my logic and in my heart, I cannot accept uh, career officials of the BARM all running for positions because they will become biased. So I move for a division of the House so that I can just count my vote as against uh, that provision. There is now a motion to divide the House on the proposed amendment of the gentleman from Sulu. Those who are in favor of the new provision as introduced by the gentleman from Sulu, please raise your hands. I'm in favor. Those who are not in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hands. Secretariat, do you have a result of the vote? Mr. Speaker, here's the result of the quotations on amendments of the Article 4, Section 8. For those in favor of the amendment, we have nine votes. For those who are not in favor of the amendments, we have 51 votes. Secretariat, please take note. the. Current language of Section 8. This is Section 8. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Is maintained. The proposed amendment has been rejected. We go, Mr. Speaker, to Section 9. And this is on party representatives setting the threshold. <clears throat> There's a proposal coming from uh, MP Ampatuan to reduce the threshold of 4% to 2.5%. Same proposal coming from MP Don Loong, which is the reduction of 4% to 2.5%. Also from MP Mitmug, from 4% to 2.5%, Mr. Speaker. The proponent, what is the pressure of the proponent? We reject, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, the gentleman from Lumba Bayabo. Uh, for records purposes, Mr. Speaker, we would like to divide the house. There is a motion to divide the house on uh, what section is this? Section nine. Section nine, section nine. article four. Four of uh, BTA Bill number twenty-nine. The question will be: uh, those who are we will now divide the House. Those who are in favor of the proposed amendments, raise your hands. Six, seven, eight. Those who are not in favor 
of the proposed amendment, please raise your hands. Bakit walang 3%? Secretariat, what is the result? Mr. Speaker, for the result of the votation on the uh, Article 4, Section 9, for those uh, in favor of the amendments, we have eight votes. For those not in favor of the amendment, we have 46 votes. Now, the current language of Section 9, Article 4 is retained. Yeah. Take note, Secretariat. We go to uh, Section 10, Mr. Speaker, but I think we have already uh, gone through a similar proposal, but in another section. Uh, but for Section 10, there's a, a proposal coming from MP Alamia to increase the nominees who are women from 30% to 50%. And then same thing from MP Ampatuan, which was also voted on earlier from 30% to 40%, Mr. Speaker. So we have settled that already. Yes, Mr. Speaker. We proceed with the next uh, provision. We go to Section 11, Mr. Speaker. There's a proposal coming from MP Ampatuan um, with respect to Section 11 to include the phrase and accepted. So the, phrase, the sentence will now read, no person shall be nominated and accepted in more than one list, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note. The proponent has rejected the proposed amendment of the lady from Maguindano. Speaker, just manifestation. Yeah, manifestation only. Um, it, it's actually unfair on a, on a person if he or she will be nominated by two parties without him or her accepting it and he will be disqualified, Mr. Speaker. That's my intention. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We take note of the manifestation of the lady from Maguindano. Mr. Speaker, may we ask for one minute suspension? One minute suspension. Please, uh, one minute. Huh?
session resumes. Have the proponent and the the proponent of the bill and the proponent of the proposed amendment come to an agreement. Mr. Speaker, uh, on section 11, um, we reconsider and accept with modification, Mr. Speaker, to read that no person shall be nominated nor accept a nomination in more than one list, Mr. Speaker. So there's a response already, Mr. Speaker. The Secretary, please take note that the proponent of the bill has accepted the proposed amendments with modification. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we go to Section 12. And I think uh, this matter has also been uh, voted on earlier. Uh, MP Alamia proposes that um, under Paragraph A of said section, uh, the threshold uh, should be reduced from 4% to 2.5%. Secretariat, that, please take note that we will forego deliberating on this provision because this, has, this matter has already been settled. We will now proceed with the next uh, provision. So there's a proposal. It's the same pro provision, Mr. Speaker. Pakibaba. Pakibaba pa po. No, no. Taas yan. Baba. <laughs> More. More, because there's a proposal coming from MP Mastura, Mr. Speaker, uh, that instead of 4%, I think the threshold is reduced to 2% of the total votes cast for the party-based system of proportional representation. Uh, and those parties and coalitions shall, receive, shall be entitled to one seat each. And provided that those garnering more than 2% of the votes shall be entitled to additional seats in proportion to their total number of votes, Mr. Speaker. This matter has already been uh, settled in a previous uh, yes, voting. Yes, Mr. Speaker, except that uh, earlier we voted on 2.5, now it's 2%. And I guess the answer would be the same, yes. uh, which is not to accept. We proceed with the next provision. So we go to the same section, but this time a proposal comes from MP Pakasem. And this is on the manner of allocation of party representative seats. Uh, it will read this way. Paragraph A, only parties receiving at least 4% of the total valid votes cast for the party representation Elections shall be qualified to participate in the allocation of party representation seats, uh, deleting the phrase one guaranteed seat each. What is the proposed amendment here? Uh, the deletion of the phrase one guaranteed seat each. And then in the second uh, paragraph, Mr. Speaker, uh, the, pro the proposed amendment now reads this way, such qualifying parties shall be ranked from highest to lowest according to the number of valid votes they obtained and the seats allocated to them shall be the proportion of the votes obtained by each to the total number of votes received by all qualifying parties rounded down to the lower whole number. Deleting the phrase, uh, the sentence, additional seat shall be allocated to them in proportion to the total number of votes of all winning parties. And then um, changing the next paragraph into the following. Thereafter, the remaining seats shall be allocated to the qualifying parties according to their ranking, giving one seat each to, to the highest down to the lowest until all the remaining seats are allocated, Mr. Speaker. So letter G will become letter F? No, actually, Mr. Speaker, letter D is actually letter A. Ah, okay. So what is the pleasure of the proponent of BTA Bill number 29? We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note the proponent has accepted the amendment. We go to Section 13, Mr. Speaker, uh, on parliamentary district seats. There's a proposal coming from MP Lim to add one sentence after the, the existing or the current language. 
Uh, and the additional sentence will read this way, independent candidates may vie for district representative seats. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note that the proponent has accepted the proposed amendment. For Section 14, Mr. Speaker, there's a proposal coming from MP Ampatuan uh, on, the ma on the allocation of parliamentary district seats. The proposal is to have parliamentary district seats uh, consisting of the eight congressional districts with three seats per district and provided that the Maguindanao del Norte and Maguindanao del Sur shall have three seats each. Provided further that the 2020 official population statistics shall be considered in the allocation of seats for the cities and the special geographic areas, thereby allocating three seats for Cotabato City, two seats for Marawi City, one seat for Lamitan City, and two seats for the special geographic area. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as um, earlier or um, responded Based on the response yesterday, Mr. Speaker, this, there is going to be a law to be enacted by Parliament on this, so we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there's no harm in including this, even though we uh, come up with another uh, law, because this is only an allocation. We, doesn't, we, did, we do not uh, define here um, the specific barangays or municipalities uh, that uh, belongs to a particular district. What we are allocating here is only the seats, Mr. Speaker. And um, with this, Mr. Speaker, I move to divide the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There is a motion to divide the House. Yeah, may we hear the uh, gentleman from Sulu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Much that we want to consider that, but... Uh... We must consider that the, in the process of the electoral code, we have submitted all provisions, including certain amendments. But this is a new provision, and we have that covered this during the public consultation. And redistricting is very critical to involve the, the region, the entirety of the region. So if I make a request, this can be considered in another bill as already propounded because the districting proposal can be legislated otherwise, separate from the present electoral code. So if I may, I would rather state that uh, considering that public consultation had not been done for redistricting because of our idea that we will legislate another uh, law on redistricting, then we should go by that. Otherwise, the people would think that we are too strong to include something which we did not include in the public consultation. That is a manifestation that I want to put it on record. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, may I also yes, the gentleman from Sultan Kudarat Magindano. Yes, uh, for me, it's also just a manifestation uh, before we vote or if 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 we will still proceed with the vote. Uh, I joined the manifestation of Attorney Lorena in the sense that there is urgency with regard to the, 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 the thing, thing. Because remember, when we ask for an extension of the BTA in the BTA one, the key issue in the Senate with regard to the electoral code was uh, we could they could not conduct elections according to the COMELEC without the districts. So in this case, we will pass the electoral code, but without the district, that is still a problem for uh, the COMELEC. And I think given this kind of uh, setup right now, COMELEC will not allow anymore that uh, elections will not proceed now that we have an electoral code simply because we don't have the districts because they can very well adapt the congressional districts. So uh, just to emphasize the urgency of this bill, uh, now that we will be passing the electoral code, I I I I uh, I support some some uh, provision with regard to the the districting. But uh, in case this is uh, withdrawn or removed, uh, as long as the manifestation remains and what Tony Joe Lorena said. Uh, is 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 for the record. Uh, I join in that manifestation. Thank you, M Mr. Speaker. There is there is a standing motion to divide the house. Mr. Speaker, before we uh, do so, Mr. Speaker, let me just also point out that the proposal is not in not consistent with what is in the Bangsamoro Organic Law, Mr. Speaker, because of the single member 
uh, district seats. So, um, Mr. Speaker, if the good lady will reconsider, I think we have um, we have already responded and addressed this, Mr. Speaker, that uh, we don't divide the house on this. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker um, with the request coming from the majority floor leader and with the wisdom coming from the father of the BOL, I withdraw my proposal. Uh -oh. Secretariat, please take note, the proponent of the proposed amendment has withdrawn his proposed amendment, her proposed amendment. Floor leader, we will proceed. Yes, Mr. Speaker, can we move to section 16, Mr. Speaker? There's a proposal coming from MP Ampatuan to delete the phrase or regional under paragraph D, Mr. Speaker. Is the pleasure of the proponent. Um, Mr. Speaker, we accept with modification to read a member of either a regional political party or sectoral organization, removing par a party after sectoral, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Secretariat, please take note the proposed amendment has been accepted with modification. Can we go to section 17, Mr. Speaker? Uh, this pertains to the manner of election of sectoral representatives. There's a proposal coming from MP Alamia to rephrase the uh, first sentence so that it reads, except for non-Moro indigenous peoples, traditional leaders representative, and ulama representative. Uh, and then the deletion of the last paragraph, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, we uh, we accept with modification. Uh, the counter proposal is to read the election of sectoral representatives shall commence in 2028. For the 2025 election, section 1 of Article 10 shall apply. With respect to the first paragraph. First paragraph. Uh, for the first paragraph, that is not uh, accepted, Mr. Speaker. So accepted with modification, Mr. Speaker. What is the modification? What, can you repeat the modification? Mr. Speaker, the modification on the first paragraph, um, we do not accept, but on the last paragraph, we... We um so for the first paragraph, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, the answer is not to uh, not accept not to accept the proposal, but for the second paragraph, there is a an acceptance with modification, so that we the the paragraph is retained, but there's a deletion of the phrase in the national and local elections, Mr. Speaker. So the paragraph is retained. It will read this way. The election of sectoral representatives shall commence in 2028, deleting the phrase in the national and local elections. What, uh, uh, the Secretariat, please take note that the uh, proposed amendment in Section 16 has been accepted by the uh, proponent of BTA Bill Number 29 with modification. Let's proceed. Uh, there's another proposal coming from uh, MP Ampatuan to insert the phrase of this code after Article 10, Mr. Speaker. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note the proponent has accepted the proposed amendment. And then uh, with respect to Section 18, there's a proposal coming from MP Ampatuan, uh, which covers, uh, which is an omnibus amendment to delete the word Regional and what just is the pertain of the to sectoral parties. We accept with modification, Mr. Speaker, to remove parties or uh, the words parties or after sectoral so that it would only appear as sectoral organizations all throughout, Mr. Speaker. Remove all part, uh, the, the word parties after sectoral? Yes. 
Secretariat, so, please take note. The proponent has accepted the proposed amendment with modification. There is a proposal with respect to the same section, Mr. Speaker, coming from MP Don Loong, to introduce a new provision uh, establishing or creating the office of the traditional tradition leaders or traditional leaders affairs. That is, uh, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note. The proponent has rejected the proposed amendment. Okay. Uh, with respect to Section 19, Mr. Speaker, also coming from MP Ampatuan, to change or to delete the word uh, regional pertaining to sectoral representatives. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note. The proponent has accepted the proposed amendment. As to Section 20, Mr. Speaker, uh, the proposal of MP Ampatuan is to change the word chap to change the word branches into chapters. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note. The proponent has accepted the pro proposed amendment. And then, with respect to Section 22, Mr. Speaker, coming from MP Mendoza, to add uh, paragraph G on gender equality, uh, so that it reads this way, gender equality recognizes the unique role and participation of women in the indigenous political structure. We accept, Mr. Speaker. With respect to Section 24, Mr. Speaker, we have several proposals. One is comes from MP Mendoza, um, which reads this way. The last paragraph will be amended so that it reads, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs shall facilitate the organization of the NMIP committee in due regard to the primacy of their customary processes. What so, is the pleasure of your proponent? We accept, Mr. Speaker. From MP Romeo Sema, Mr. Speaker, uh, the proposal is to uh, change the phrase from tribal leader representatives uh, sorry, from representatives of indigenous people structures to tribal leaders of the indigenous political structures. We accept, Mr. Speaker. And then from MP Piang, Mr. Speaker, um, the phrase propriety of rotation arrangement uh, to be included in the matters that the NMIP committee shall um, consider, Mr. Speaker. We accept, Mr. Speaker. And then with respect to Section 25, Mr. Speaker, coming from MP Parcasio, um, and there's there are several of uh, sections or provisions, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Section 25, the election of NMIP representatives shall be done in tribal assemblies in accordance with the procedure in the following sections. And then the following sections are so provided. Uh, so in Section 26, the selection of four representatives, each tribe shall convene a tribal assembly to select four representatives, two males and two females to an inter-regional tribal assembly. And this will decide the manner of rotation of tribal representation in the Bangsamoro Parliament. The selection of four representatives shall be in accordance with their customs and traditions. Can we go? Can we go up? Um, still on this matter of uh, selecting the representatives in the assemblies and the in the convention. Uh, Section 27 goes on to say that the Inter-Tribal Regional Assembly will select the pairing of at least two tribes that will have their tribal members represent NMIP sectoral representatives in the parliament. The process of selecting the pairing of tribes will be done in accordance with the procedure adopted by the Tribal Regional Assembly in accordance with customs and traditions. And then Section 28, Election of Tribal representative. Uh, the fo following the intertribal assembly, each of the two paired tribes shall convene their respective tribal assemblies 
to elect the NMIP sectoral representatives to the Bangsamora Parliament in accordance with their customs and traditions. <laughs> Section 29, submission of the names of the two elected NMIP, the names of the two elected NMIP representatives from the two paired tribes shall be submitted to the COMELEC through the BEO within seven days before the parliamentary elections. And Section 30, succeeding election procedure provided under the foregoing sections shall apply to succeeding elections. Um, Mr. Speaker, so that would be the process of electing or selecting the NMIP representatives, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, since the idea of uh, rotation uh, from the language of MP Parcasio as submitted is already captured by that of the accepted language from MP Romeo Sema, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Uh, MP Piang, sorry. MP Piang. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have lived, I'm a Moro, but I have lived within. Uh, community, non-Moro indigenous communities. Non-Moro indigenous communities who are not uh, residents of this uh, region. And I have in, intermingled with them. I have learned their culture and I could even speak uh, their languages. In addition, Mr. Speaker, not only have I lived amidst uh, indigenous peoples who are not Muslims, but I have also uh, studied, and in fact, uh, I've been a lecturer of the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act. And in my intermingling with them, since I was a child, I have... Uh, seen their simplicity. And uh, because of that, I have proposed these sections as amendment to the, uh, to the proposed uh, bill. And so therefore, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I would move, despite the fact that I have some idea on how the voting will, will uh, you know, will result, or how the how the what was the result of the voting? I would still request that uh, we divide the house, Mr. Speaker. There is a motion to divide the house. We will proceed immediately for Those, purposes of for purposes of record. Yeah, Mr. Speaker. Those who are in favor of the uh, Parcasio amendments. Please raise your yeah. What? Well, Mr. Speaker, we did not go through the other amendments. Can we just include that in the voting also? Because I stopped at section 30, but there's also section 31, which is monitoring of assemblies, so that we don't go through. Yeah, that's why I'm, I already uh, is at Parcasio amendments. Okay. Up to section 32, Mr. Speaker. As to, uh, all Parcasio amendments. We are dealing here with all Parcasio amendments as far as the NMIP is concerned. All of those uh, from what section? Please uh, state uh, the beginning of the can, section. Can we go down? Section 25, Mr. Speaker. Up to? 32. There is now a motion to divide the to divide the house from section twenty four to thirty two. All of the uh, from section twenty five to thirty two. All of these are Parcasio amendments. All of those who are in favor of the Parcasio amendments, please raise your hands. All of those who are not in favor of the Parcasio amendments, please raise your hands. Oh. 
Secretariat, do you have the results? Mr. Speaker, the result of the Division of the House on Article 4, Section 25 to Section 32. For those in favor of the amendments, we have 10 votes. For those not in favor of or not favoring the amendments, we have 46 votes. The amendment is rejected. Mr. Speaker, we go to uh, election of traditional leaders. There's a proposal coming from MP Makasalong uh, pertaining to Section 31, which is on the manner of elections of traditional leaders. It reads this way. Each sultanate shall be given equal opportunity on a rotational basis to represent the traditional leaders in the parliament as a sectoral representative. For this purpose, the Bangsamoro Commission for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage shall hold a regional convention of sultans representing the sultanates of A, Sulu, B, Magindanao, Kabuntalan, and Buayan, 3, Ranao, 4, Iranun, for the purpose of determining the order by which each of the sultanate shall represent the sector in the parliament. The result of this convention shall be submitted to the BEO. The BEO shall then call an intra-sultanate assembly of the relevant sultanate to determine from among its members the traditional leader to occupy the parliamentary seat, Mr. Speaker. There is another proposed amendment amendment from MP Loong. Yes, Should Mr. we Speaker, read it also? Can we go up while the can we go to MP Don Loong first? Uh pro amendment, proposed amendment. Uh manner of election, traditional leaders shall be given equal opportunity to become a member of the parliament as a sectoral representative on a rotational basis. In addition, with the Coordination with the BEO, the Bangsamora Commission on the Preservation of Cultural Heritage shall hold an intra sultanate assembly for the purpose of electing the representative of each sultanate that shall represent them in the inter-sultanate convention. Thereafter, the inter-sultanate inter assembly shall be held to elect the sultanate that shall represent the sector as traditional leader in the parliament for the immediately succeeding term provided that the sultanate which has already served a term in the parliament is automatically disqualified unless all the other sultanates have previously served their terms. Mr. Speaker, we do not accept the proposed amendment uh, from MP Don Loong, but we accept the proposed amendment from MP Makasalong. Secretariat, please take note that the Makasalong amendment has been accepted. We go to another proposal coming from MP Don Loong to introduce two new sections. Uh, the first being on vacancy. In case of death, permanent disability, incapacity, or refusal to perform duties and responsibilities of the elected traditional leader representative, the nominating sultanate shall hold an intra-sultanate convention within 15 days after the vacancy to elect the successor who shall serve the unexpired term. The name of the successor shall be submitted to the COMELEC through the BEO. The COMELEC shall proclaim the successor as the new representative. Mr. Speaker, we accept with modification and uh, as to the placement and to place the same in the common provisions for NMIP, traditional leaders, and ulama. It would read section blank. Vacancy in the NMIP, traditional, traditional and ulama sectoral seats. 
traditional leaders and Duluma sectoral seats in case of death, permanent disability, incapacity, or refusal to perform duties and responsibilities of the elected sectoral representative, the nominating sector shall hold a special assembly and convention within 15 days after the vacancy to elect the successor who shall serve the unexpired term. The procedure prescribed in the election process for the affected sector shall be observed. Secretariat, please take note that the proposed amendment has been accepted with modification. Floor leader. Uh, going to section 34, Mr. Speaker, MP Don Loong proposes that there be a section on the effect of failure to elect representative in the intra-sultanate assembly. It will read this way, in the event that the sultanate fails to elect the representative in an intra-sultanate assembly or convention, they shall be deemed to have waived the right to participate in the inter-sultanate assembly for that election. We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note that the proponent has rejected the proposed amendment. Mr. Speaker, one minute suspension, Mr. Speaker. One minute suspension. One minute suspension. I think there's a manifestation coming from the proponent in relation to section 33. 33 or yes, Mr. Speaker, when we um when we announced uh, that we accept with modification the proposed amendment of MP Loong, um yeah, I would right. like to uh, we we would like to add a a phrase that reads consistent with the rule on rotation so that it will read in case of death, permanent disability, incapacity, or refusal to perform duties and responsibilities of the elected sectoral representative, the nominating sector shall hold a special assembly and convention within 15 days after the vacancy to elect the successor who shall serve the unexpired term comma consistent with the rule on rotation. The procedure prescribed in the election process for the affected sector shall be observed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note of the modification. Okay, we move to section, to the next provision uh, pertaining to section 33 of the bill. 
there's a proposal coming from MP Miswari uh, to add the phrase and equal opportunity for represent representation on the basis of rotation uh, in relation to the first paragraph of said provision, Mr. Speaker. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note that the proposed amendment, Miswari amendment has been accepted. In relation to Section 34, Mr. Speaker, there's a manifestation coming from the chair of the committee. Yes, there is a manifestation uh, that the in the attached copy, uh, in the distributed clean copy, we reflected the correct language. But in the committee report, the attached copy reflects this language which was uh, brought to our attention by... MP, I forget who, pero sinabi niya na um, hindi magkatugma, no? So that we stand by the clean version, the cleansed version uh, that would read, that will participate in the regional Ulama Convention and the criteria for participation taking consideration the track, track record of the delegates full stop, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's a secretariat, um, I mean, Conf maybe confusion in the distribution, Mr. Speaker. So this 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 proposal here is no longer considered, or this one is considered. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. In order to be consistent with the intention of the committee on rules to adapt this language, which is para hindi lang confuse because they are different in the clean copy at saka dun sa attached to the committee report, Mr. Secretary. Speaker. Please take note. Floor leader, we proceed. Yes, we go to section 36. Mr. Speaker, there's a proposal coming from MP Ampatuan to uh, insert the phrase through the BEO after the word COMELEC. We accept, Mr. Speaker. With respect to section 38, Mr. Speaker, we accept, the same proposal is uh, forwarded by MP Ampatuan. We go to section... To Secretary, article. please take note of the two proposed uh, amendments have been accepted. Article 5, can we go down? Article 6. Okay. Coming from MP Makatanong, Mr. Speaker, to introduce a section on review and annulment of Book of Voters. I think he expounded on this, that this was proposed and this was accepted in the committee level. Mr. Speaker, we accept, Mr. Speaker. And on chapter one of article uh, section one, anong article seven on election administration, there's a proposal coming from MP Don Loong to add a paragraph uh, regarding the effect of the running for office or by accepting a nomination uh, on the appointive uh, officer. The exception petition. Hmm. Effect of acceptance kasi yung kanina. Ito, uh -oh. so candidates holding appointive office or positions. Magkaiba po. So there's a proposal for the second paragraph. We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and then on section four, Mr. Speaker, I think we discussed this already. This has been settled already. We proceed with the uh, next provision. Can we move down? To section six, there's a proposal coming from MP Lim. Uh, first to renumber section six to so that it becomes section nine, uh, and then for section nine to, to to include section nine on substitution of candidates, Mr. Speaker. Uh -oh. We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, please take note the proponent did not accept the proposed amendment of MP Lim. Uh, on Section 7, Mr. Speaker, there's a proposal to include the word 
political after the word regional. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Yung renumbering, okay pa rin yan. And uh, a proposal coming from MP Lim to renumber Section 7 to Section 6 and Section 8 to Section 7. A uh, matter of style, Mr. Speaker, we do not act on it, Mr. Speaker. Okay, on Section 9, Mr. Speaker, also a renumbering coming from MP Lim and also from MP uh, Loong to introduce a new paragraph uh, which will read this way, his or her name does not appear in the list of nominees of another party, save in case cases of a coalition or aggregation. We accept with modification, Mr. Speaker, to read his... <clears throat> To read, his or her name does not appear in the list of nominees of another party except in cases of a coalition. Full stop, Mr. Speaker. All caps. Full stop. Uh, full um, stop. Sa coalition. Okay. On Secretary, please take note. On Section 12, uh, the proposal of MP Ampatuan is to delete the word COMELEC uh, in the whole provision, Mr. Speaker. Ano? And also, that is the proposal for the next uh, section. Yes, we accept both, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there's a proposal to include Section 16 uh, from MP Alamia uh, to include a section on ballot structure. The official ballots of the BARM elections shall include, aside from the name of all candidates, each candidate's photo slash logo, and the option to vote for none of the above, the COMELEC through the BEO, shall take efforts to ensure that the Bangsamoro people are aware of all candidates running for elections in the barn. Mr. Speaker, we accept with nomination to make the title... With modification. Yes, to, make the, to change the title to official ballot and that it will read as far as practicable. The official ballots for the BARM elections shall include... Kama, aside from the name of all candidates, Kama, each candidate's photo or slash logo, and a none of the above option, period. The COMELEC through the BEO shall take efforts to ensure that the Bangsamoro people are aware of all candidates running for elections in the BARM. Secretariat, please take note that the proponent has accepted the amendment with modification. There's a proposal, Mr. Speaker, to amend Section 1. Um, we, coming from MP Ampatuan to change the word commission to COMELEC. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Also coming from MP Ampatuan, uh, with respect to Section 3, uh, the amendment is to change, uh, to include the phrase through the BEO. We accept, Mr. Speaker. Rather than COMELEC BEO. Ooh, malapit na. Ay, meron, meron, meron. Ops, 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 Balik, balik. Balik, balik, balik. Ah. Okay. On section 42, Mr. Speaker, there's a proposal coming from MP Mastura. Uh, it will read this way. There shall be a regional board of canvassers for votes cast for party representatives under the system of proportional representation composed of the head of the Bangsamoro Electoral Office as chairman, the regional prosecutor, and the regional treasurer, treasurer as members. The Commission on Elections shall provide for the rules on the manner of canvassing of votes for party representatives under the system of proportional representation. Mr. Speaker, we do not accept. Mr. Speaker. You accept. the. We do not accept. You do not. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, may I be heard? I'd just like to point out that uh, there's no board of canvassers for the party list or the rather the party representatives. Did you provide for it? There's another. Yes, paragraph. Mr. Speaker, okay. paragraph two. Okay. Uh, that's all, Mr. Speaker, I just wanted. You're withdrawing your proposed amendment. I, I, I would like to see first the, the provision upstairs. Okay. Go, go pa. Sige pa. Sige pa. Sige pa. Where is it? Sige, there. Okay. So that's, uh, I accept that and I withdraw my amendment. 
Secretariat, please take note that the proponent of the amendment has withdrawn his proposed amendment. On section 14, Mr. Speaker, and section 15, a proposal coming from MP MPM Patuan uh, is the proposal is to change Commission on Elections to COMELEC. We accept, Mr. Speaker. And then on section 8, I think this is a new uh, provision uh, to insert a provision on the prosecution of vote buying and vote selling. Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? We accept, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> uh, section 2 of Article 9, Mr. Speaker, uh, MP Ampatuan proposes to change the word commission to COMELEC. We accept, Mr. Speaker. On transitory provision, Section 1, the proposal is to coming from MP Ampatuan is to change uh, accredited into registered sectoral organization. We accept with modifica modification, Mr. Speaker, uh, in that portion called for the purpose by registered and accredited, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note that it has been accepted with modification and that the proposed amendment of MP Alami a while ago was also accepted. Uh, on Section 4, Mr. Speaker, the proposal coming from MP Alamia. This has already been, this has already been uh, deleted already a while ago. Subsidy fund. But there's a yeah. proposal on to include Section 4 uh, on, on transitory limitation on the power to dissolve the parliament upon the vote, upon a vote of no confidence, Mr. Speaker. We accept, Mr. Speaker. And then from MP Don Loong to, uh, to include another section on the establishment of regional political parties. Uh, the proposal is to have the 5,000 members, but also the requirement that a provision, provincial chapter uh, is required to have municipal chapters. This is part of the transitory provisions, I think, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. But the second paragraph. So we've we do not, already decided. No, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. And then. Yes, uh, the proposed uh, long amendment is no longer accepted. Okay. Both in the first paragraph and in the second paragraph. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, section 16 to introduce another section. Uh, saying that notwithstanding the provisions of Section 8, Article 4, the members of the Banks of Transition Authority may continue to hold even after acceptance of their nominations and shall not be considered ipso facto resigned. We, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Secretariat, please take note that the two long amendments has been rejected. There are no other proposed amendments, Mr. Speaker. Somebody should move for the termination of the period of amendments. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of amendment. There is a motion to terminate the period of amendment. It's been seconded. The period of amendment is now terminated. We will now proceed with the approval. Mr. Speaker, uh, I think there's an appeal coming from MP Ambolodo to introduce a, an amendment with respect to uh, election offenses, which was not included in the matrix, Mr. Speaker. One minute suspension.
Session resume. Mr. Speaker, I appealed a while ago that we reopen considering the uh, request coming from MP Ambolotto. I think the proposal is... If there is no objection to the reopening of the period of amendment, we will reopen the period of amendment. Uh, the proposal, Mr. Speaker, is to delete the whole, uh, all the provisions pertaining to election uh, offenses under Article 8, Miss. Uh, election contest. Election contest under Chapter 3 of Article 7, uh, uh, Section 1 to 16, Mr. Speaker, of Article 7. We do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, we will hear you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we note, Mr. Speaker, uh, that these are procedures that are already provided for under the rules of court or the rules of the Commission on Elections. And so it may not, uh, it does not, uh, I am not, I'm not sure how it found its way into our law, which by itself is already good. Uh, so I suggest that in as much as these are within the proper province or jurisdiction of the Supreme Court or the Commission on Elections in the, in the exercise of the rulemaking power over procedures under their courts or the Commission on Elections, I respectfully, most respectfully submit that we consider deleting the entire provision on election contest. And in as much as it does not have fine proper, supposed proper in place in our law, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Mr. Speaker, uh, we do not accept, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in as much that I, uh, uh, I was supposed to be a, uh, no. Mr. Speaker, I move for the division of the House on the matter use, Mr. Speaker. May we hear the uh, wisdom of the Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support the view of my esteemed colleague, uh, a former election officer, because the matter is jurisdictional. And it is also provided for already in the law. Whether we include it here or not, jurisdictional, jurisdictional limitations and the delineation, the, the delineation of, of the jurisdiction of the COMELEC, the courts, and the are already well defined. Therefore, it is only surplusage, but the Implication is we will be courting a lot of questions if we include this. But if it will not include this, it will not be a disadvantage to the BARM, to all of us, because it is already provided by national law. And a minute suspension. Under existing, existing rule. Thank you. That is just a manifestation, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr.
Session resumes. Mr. Speaker, I think there's a counter proposal coming from the committee chair. May we see the counter proposal? Mr. Speaker, um, I'm sorry that I was not able to pass the language to the Secretariat to reflect it on the screen, but um, the counter proposal is to uh, change section two. Can we show the. Ito na ba yun? Okay, so Secretariat, please, um, we propose to delete on election contests in the title of the section uh, of section two, so it will read only jurisdiction. And then we add uh, a phrase, uh, a beginning phrase that would read pursuant to section two, comma, article nine of the 1987 constitution. 9C. 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 Article 9C. Of the 1987 Constitution. May I ask the proponent of the amendment to look at the uh, draft of the uh, proponent of the bill, the counter proposal. Yung, yung, and then the section, the section three and section four language will be inserted as section, uh, a second paragraph and third paragraph of section two. Ito ito. So that we will delete sections three and four. Okay. Uh, and uh, can we remove shall after the courts? Re regional trial courts have exclusive jurisdiction. Remove shall. Same thing with the. Okay, this is uh, the counter proposal, Mr. Speaker. What the first shall in the first paragraph? The Comelec shall? Uh, the Comelec exercises. Yes, Mr. Thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Speaker. Pleasure of the proponent of the amendment. Secretariat, please take note that the proponent of the bill has accepted the proposed amendment with modification. Considering, Mr. Speaker, that we have taken up all the proposed amendments, I move to close the There's period There is now a motion to terminate the period of amendment. It's been seconded. The period of amendment is now terminated. Mr. Speaker, I move to approve on second reading by Viva Voce, uh, BTA Bill Number 29. There, there is a motion to approve on second reading proposed BTA Bill Number 29 by Viva Voce votes. Is there any second? There being no objection, the motion is approved. We will pro we will proceed with the voting Viva Voce. Those who are in favor of BTA bill. Those who are not in favor, say nay. It is a resounding Victory for BTA Bill number 29. Mr. Speaker, considering that uh, BTA Bill number 39 has been certified as an urgent bill, uh, we can move to the, we, we move that the three day requirement 
be dispensed with and that we be allowed to print uh, copies. copies of the bill as approved on second reading and then proceed to the third reading, Mr. Speaker, thereafter. There's a motion to proceed on third reading. Yeah. Third and final reading. Uh, uh, please wait for my uh, resolution on the motion. There being no objection, we, we will proceed on third and final reading subject to the printing of the final copies of the uh, approved bill. Session suspended for five minutes.
A bill number 29. The rule is we will have a nominal voting. We will allow only an explanation of vote of up, up to one minute. So, if others can, uh, Mr. Speaker, yes. What if the speech or the explanation of votes pass uh, one minute? Will you allow us to finish? We will. I will allow you Thank to. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the clarification. But okay, we will proceed. Waiting for the motion from the floor leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we already have the printed copy of VTA Bill number 29 as passed on second reading. I move that we proceed to the third reading and uh, allow the members of the parliament to take their nominal votes. There is now a motion to proceed with the third and final reading of VTA Bill number 29. It has been seconded. We will proceed with nominal voting. Secretary General, please proceed. Nominal voting on BTE Parliament Bill number 29 entitled An Act Providing for the Bangsamoro Electoral Code of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Honorable Members of the Parliament, Abbas Ahmad. Abbas Harun. Abbas Basit. Abu Mujib. Alamia Laisa. Mr. Speaker, I would like to exercise my right to speak for a minute and explain my vote. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Proceed. Speaker. I am voting yes to the Bangsamoro Electoral Code as passed on second reading and deliberated upon by all the members, majority of the members of this August Parliament. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, there were proposals for more women inclusion and the different marginalized sectors inclusion and political participation in the regional political parties that I will continue to pursue, which were not included in this uh, electoral code. Nevertheless, I commend the entire Bangsamoro Parliament for all of our contributions, your contributions to improve and enhance the Bangsamoro Electoral Code as we are about to pass this now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My vote is yes. Alauddin Musbir. Ali Ibrahim. Ali Lanang Jr. Mr. Speaker, I have my one minute uh, explanation of my vote. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, Bangsamoro Electoral Code or Bangsamoro uh, Bill, uh, Parliament Bill Number 21, Mr. Speaker, has undergo a series of uh, consultations, engagement with the COMELEC. Mr. Speaker, the constitutionality of Bangsamoro Organic Law, Mr. Speaker, has already been passed to the House of Representatives and the Senate and approved by the President. There was, there, there was a thorough scrutiny, no less than the Congress of the Philippines, that the BOL is constitutional. Mr. Speaker, 
the the provisions of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code since yesterday, I have heard to my fellow MPs all the provisions, Mr. Speaker, they declared this a reasonable, ideal, and there is nothing wrong with the provisions of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. So therefore, Mr. Speaker, I believe that this Bangsamoro Electoral Code approval of the BEC is a historical moment for us because this is the first time, Mr. Speaker, that a parliamentary elections in 2025 will be held in the Bangsamoro homeland. My vote is yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Ali Idi. Mr. Speaker, please allow me to explain my vote. Proceed. Our distinguished Chief Minister, Ahud Ibrahim, esteemed Speaker, Pangalian Balindong, fellow members of the Bangsamoro Parliament, staff of the BTA, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Please silent, remain silent. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalat, wassalamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My vote is yes. In fact, a resounding yes. My yes vote for the BTA bill number 29 or the Bangsamoro Electoral Code is a milestone in the Bangsamoro request. The significance and indispensability of, the, of this piece of legislation cannot be stressed enough, saying that we need this law because it is our legal obligation to enact it under Republic Act 11054 is, in my opinion, an oversimplification. Just saying that and yan sa BOL, eh, tapos usapan is it is selfish to the real essence of this crucial act of the parliament. It is definitely more than that. It is more than just a legal mandate. We are making history here because this is a major shifting point in the political landscape of our region. We are giving birth to something Philippine politics has never seen before. This is because of three operative concepts, asymmetry, innovative reforms, and legacy. The electoral system that we are institutionalizing here is a manifestation of the asymmetrical nature of the Bangsamoro government vis-a-vis -vis the national government. The asymmetry is there because it is a manifestation of a greater autonomy than we ever had. We are carving our own political path because the Bangsamoro identity demands a system unique and impeccable to our needs and context. What's the point of autonomy if we are just copy-pasting and mimicking a system that has proven not to work and that has been forced on a nation with a completely distinct way of life. Secondly, this new system is introducing innovative reforms that would fix the problems that have corrupted our electoral system for a very long time. It will shift the paradigm of the Bangsamoro voters to a more principled and platform-based choice of leadership. We will finally have an electoral code custom fitted to a parliamentary system of governance, requiring at least 30% women in party representation, eradication of monopoly of power through the anti-political dynasty provision, and much more. The provision of this elect, elect, election code have addressed this, inshallah. Lastly, Despite all the harsh criticisms and the immense political pressure from all sides, I load this August body for, for the amazing patience or sabar in going through the rigorous process of public consultations 
and hearings, intense deliberations and debates, and for just the sheer effort of every one of us in going around the provinces, cities, and islands of our region just to hear the voices of our constituents and stakeholders as regards this crucial piece of legislation. That is because the passage of this statute enables the Bangsamoro Transition Authority to leave behind a legacy that would leave a mark on our history and that would fulfill the purpose of our jihad. At the end of the day, the election code is a representation of the demands of the people for a better election system, better leadership, and a better life for us all. Inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq in passing this law and make it beneficial for the Bangsamoro people and accept it as an, as an ibadah fi sabilillah. Wa billahi tawfiq wal hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm. Ambolodo Suharto. Mr. Speaker, you proceed. Uh, allow me to use my one minute in extending my commendation and gratitude, first and foremost, to the Cabinet Committee who has initiated our journey in the, in the drafting of the uh, election code. Again, also, I would like to reiterate and reaffirm our recognition of the devotion, dedication, and hard work that has been invested by the floor leader and committee and the committee on rules that he chairs and also the deputy floor leaders. And again, also, we would like to commend the uh, presiding officers, no? presiding officers Nabil Tan, presiding officer uh, Tanang Ali, and presiding officer uh, o uh, attorney Omar Sema for the, for the generous space that you have allotted all the members of the parliament for us to be able to enrich. And again, I also uh, commend members of this parliament who has uh, contributed a lot in enriching and trying to uh, provide and develop a better, uh, a good uh, uh, Bangsamore election code. And of course, we would also have to congratulate our speaker for uh, shepherding and being the captain of our ship and being able to deliver, uh, at least tonight, to our honorable chief minister the first deliverable under the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. I vote yes. Aminuddin Abdulaziz. Ampatuan Ba Intan. Mr. Speaker, may I have my one minute? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Unang una, Ang gusto kong sabihin ay isa ako sa masayang tao ngayong gabi. Um, nakita ko po yung proseso simula sa public consultations, papunta doon sa Committee on Rules, at ngayon dito sa plenary. For the first time, Mr. Speaker, nagkaroon po tayo ng very smooth na proseso sa lahat ng pinagdaanan na proseso na meron tayo. And I would like to commend the leadership of the floor leader for this effort. Hindi dahil membro ako ng Committee on Rules, pero nagmamasid ako sa lahat ng ating ginagawa dahil Ito ay parte ng historical history, has history na ng ating Bangsamoro. At uh, Mr. Speaker, actually hindi ko ma-express yung gusto kong sabihin dahil very overwhelming yung nakita ko na pagbabago. Pagbabago sa proseso, hindi ko man nakuha yung gusto kong mangyari. Nagpaboto man ako at natalo ako. Nanalo pa rin tayong lahat. Sa mga kababayan, patuloy po ang ating advocacy. 
Marami pa tayong kailangang gawain, ngunit ito ay isang tagumpay. Naway wag tayong magsawa at patuloy tayong ipaglaban, lalong-lalo pa ngayon, na pataon ang pagpasa ng isang landmark legislation sa araw ng pagdiriwang ng Kabuanan o International Women's Day. Mabuhay ang mga kababayan, mabuhay ang Bangsamoro, my vote is a resounding yes. Anayatin, Susana. Mr. Speaker, may I use my one minute privilege? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Isang magandang gabi po sa ating lahat, sa ating Chief Minister, sa ating Speaker, sa ating lahat nang dito ngayon. Uh, isa na namang makasaysayang araw para sa ating lahat. We saw that democracy is at work this uh, very day. Uh, isang malaking karangalan po na maging bahagi ng, uh, uh, ng grupong ito na nagsusulong ng political struggle. So, bilang bahagi, kabahagi niyo po sa pagsusulong ng uh, sariling pagpapasya, uh, ikinagagalak ko po mula noon hanggang ngayon. Patuloy po ang suporta ko sa struggle na ito. Kaya Mr. Speaker, bumaboto po ako ng yes. Antaw Muhammad Gili. Mr. Speaker, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi israhli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yabkahu kawl wa bada assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Isang makasaysayang gabi para sa bangsa moro. Na ang pagpasanang itong batas na ito, ukod na ito, para po sa translation ng advokasya ng ating mahal na Chief Minister ng Moral Governance. Ito na ang isa sa mga daan upang may sakatuparan ang advokasya na ito na ang pagbabago sa bangsa muro ay magmula sa political struggle, sa political exercises na kung saan minsan yan ang pinagmula ng hindi pagkakaintindihan. Dahil po sa napakaganda ng proseso na pinupuntahan ang bawat mamayan at sa mga expert na nagbigay ng kanilang mga suggestion, palagay ko po, hindi man ito perfecto, pero ito'y isang batas na magpalakas ng advokasya ng ating Chief Minister na magkaroon ng moral governance. Kaya po sa gabing ito, isang makasaysayan na yes ang aking buto. Arnado Mirian. Mr. Speaker, I am voting yes to the Bangsamoro elect Electoral Code for four reasons. First, it is uh, it has a very strong anti-political dynasty provision, which is first in our country. Second, it is also it also has very good provision on climate change adaptation and environment by encouraging the use of non-biodegradable substances in the, our campaign for paraphernalia. I think this is another innovation in the Bangsamoro that we can be truly proud of. Third is the women-friendly provision which encourage a, which sets a quota of 30% for the representation of women in the political parties. This is a big step. Uh, we can still improve on this, but this is something that we can al already celebrate as a victory for the Bangsamoro women. Fourth, we are setting a very good precedent by uh, laying the foundation for the establishment and strengthening of strong political party, which is first in the country. We can be the model, we can be the example of setting the good, uh, of setting uh, the best example of legislation that will encourage electoral reform and uh, introducing new politics not only in the Bangsamoro but in the entire country. I vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Asnawi dan Your bocer Babau Ali Muntaha Balindong Pangalian Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I assure you that uh, my explanation is much, much shorter than the explanation of the Honorable MP Idiali. Chief Minister Ahud Balawag Ibrahim, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today is a historic day for the Bang Samoro Parliament. As we decide the fate of the landmark legislation that will not only force political reforms, but more importantly, rehabilitate the electoral system in our homeland. For decades, our elections had been demonized with corruption, irregularities, and violence, which to some extent is a fair criticism. But the sad thing is that these evil practices are perpetrated by only a few, and that a majority of the electorate have become their unwilling victims because of a flawed electoral system. This is a chance, therefore, for all of us to rectify the system that contributed to our political degeneration and become a source of cultural shame. It is an opportune time for us to set a new stage for our future leaders to lead our people by exemplifying honesty, equality, and empowering the true voice of democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues, I plead to you, those who have not yet voted, to give your final stamp of approval to the Bang Samoro Electoral Code. I vote yes, yes, yes. Basman Anatarhata. Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in my four years as a member of the parliament, at dahil na pag-utusan po ako, I am taking the podium for the first time to explain my vote on what I feel is a matter that in all the noise, all the hoopla during the past days, weeks, and months that we've undergone the legislative process for this bill bears stressing. Mr. Speaker, I vote yes for the bill that defines the only election in the country that has strengthened and cemented women's participation in real and practical terms. Mr. Speaker, una po sa party building, tayo lamang po ang nag-require ng concrete women's agenda bago mag-register ang isang political party. Sa decision-making bodies po ng lahat ng political parties, required ang healthy participation ng mga kababaihan. At pati sa nomination ng kanilang mga kandidato, required na merong mga kababaihan at hindi sila may iwan. At hindi po dyan natatapos ang uh, comfort at pagrespeto sa mga kababaihan during elections ay ginagarantiya. Mr. Speaker, atin pong pinagmamalaki na hindi ito mahanap sa kahit saang sulok ng ating bansa. Mr. Speaker, your colleagues is, is not going to be long. 
But I hope to uh, reiterate that it is only fitting that this huge leap for women's meaningful political participation, which traces its roots in the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro, is entrenched in the Bangsamoro Electoral Code, not just on Women's Month, but also in International Women's Day. This is sh us showing the world once again that when it comes to gender rights, gender justice, the Bangsamoro is not just competing, but is at the forefront. Maraming salamat po. My vote is yes. Kandao by Maliha. Dilanggalin Hashimi. Mr. Speaker, may I be recognized? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I take great pride and honor in participating in this historical enactment of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code, which will shape the Bangsamoro for the years to come. It is my hope that the enactment of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code will bring us unity rather than divide us or rupture our solidarity. It is my hope that the enactment of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code will bring a new and a better day to the Bangsamoro. At higit sa lahat, naniniwala ako na pag ng itong batas ay para sa kapakanan ng sambayanang Bangsamoro. For the Bangsamoro, I voted yes to the proposed Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Dumama Alba Iliha, Sa Iliha. Iyak ako. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and uh, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Uh, sa ating mahal na Chief Minister, sa ating mahal na Speaker, Deputy Speakers, Fellow Floor Leaders, um, at sa lahat po ng members ng Parliament dito. Um, I would like to honor the other women who were also the brains of uh, the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Um, at uh, lahat po ng mga kasamahan dito, uh, first, time, first time ko pong mag... Um, uh, oh, first time because during the budget... Um, appropriations and uh, appropriations act i ako po i i missed it but uh you challenged me you inspire me and you bring out the best and worst in me <laughs> so maraming maraming salamat po sa experience na ito uh, lahat ng ito ay hindi po mangyayari kundi hindi po sa tulong ng Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all successes and blessings come from him. And uh, I vote yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. Maraming 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 salamat po. Ibrahim Ahud. Ismail Suharto. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members of the August Party, Republic Act 11054 mandated this August Party to pass an electoral code providing a system to serve the best interests of the Bangsamoro people who experience decades of conflicts and instability due to political disagreement amongst different groups. Consequently, today we aim to address this issue by providing greater autonomy and self-determination for the region's constituents. The Bangsamoro Electoral Code does not only provide a legal basis for holding free and fair elections, it ensures equal representation regardless of political affiliation or ethnic background. The approval of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code will be instrumental in promoting peaceful and inclusive democracy in the region, 
a crucial step toward long-term stability and development. The provision providing more room for the women to participate in governance is a breakthrough. It gave a principle of inclusivity, a breath of life by recognizing the importance of women in leading the Bangsamoro people in attaining its aspiration. A snappy salute to all Bangsamoro women. Happy International Women's Day. With this, my vote is yes in favor of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code, Pagpalain Bangsamoro. Estino Matarol. Uh, Mr. Speaker, allow me to give my uh, message. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mr. Speaker, esteemed member of this most august body. Before I express my stand on the facets of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code, uh, please allow me to commend the men and women behind the crafting of the first electoral code for the Bangsamoro, our colleagues who participated in the lengthy discussion on the proposed law, paper by paper, words per word, just to provide the Bangsamoro with a comprehensive and encompassing electoral system forged with the will of the people. Let us not drift away from what really drove us to establish this transition government. We have to uphold the welfare of the people. The very interest of the Bangsamoro is of the paramount importance over our personal leanings. Today, we have been given the autonomy as embodied in the Bangsamoro organic law to fully govern ourselves and we have to exercise such autonomy to the fullest as long as it is within the ambit of the Philippine constitution and Islamic principle. And I respectfully believe, Mr. Speaker, that the proposed Bangsamoro electoral code is an exercise of such autonomy and reflect the true sentiments of our people. Hence, I vote yes in favor of the passage of Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Gayak Abdullah. Gira Edward. Uh, okay, my vote is a giant yes. Uh, we have gone into proper process of uh, uh, crafting this uh, bill, and uh, I'm confident that it will send a very positive message to the entire PDPs, especially to the national government. All I can say, I'm competently say, na mukang hinog na ang parliament. Hinog na ang mga membro ng parliament. Naging bright na po sila. What is your vote? What is your vote? Uh, <laughs> Haji Abdullah Khalid. Hashim Abdullah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my courtesies first to our dear Chief Minister, Hafidahullah, and to our Parliament Speaker, Hafidahullah. I would also like to Congratulate the uh, floor leader and uh, yung mga kasama niya. And uh, my fellow members of the um, Committee on Rules, um, I would also like to congratulate us. And um, 
uh, sa lahat ng members of the parliament who participated in this uh, exercise. Um, Mr. Speaker, we need stability, peace, and security. We need a stable and truly autonomous regional government upon which our Bangsamoro nation will stand. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, in consideration of our history and struggle as a people, and in consideration of the blood, sweat, and tears of those before us, and in consideration of the agreements that have been signed and agreed upon after so much laborious decades, and upon our mandate, Mr. Speaker, I vote for a resounding yes. Hassan Hatimil. Please turn on the microphone of uh, the deputy uh, speaker, Hassan. Sorry. My uh, vote is yes, Mr. Speaker. Pero sa ngayon pa lang, I'd already don't like to campaign. You have to support ang kandidato ng Moro Islamic Liberation Front at ang Moro National Liberation Front. Dahil sila po ang nag-struggle for almost 40, 50 years para matamu natin ang autonomia at ang self-determination ng Bangsamoro. Ang mga kandidato ng Moro Islamic Liberation Front at Moro National Liberation Front, I'm sure they'll be there to protect and keep safe ang autonomia natin na nakuha natin through sacrifices uh, for a long years of sacrifices. And at the same time, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to appeal to all leaders of political parties to see to it to distribute their nominees to all the five component, to all the component provinces and cities of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in order to achieve equitable representation in the Pangsamoro Parliament, Mr. Speaker. For that, Mr. Speaker, again, my vote is yes. Iqbal Mohagir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My question to one and sundry. Meron pa bang mas makabuluhan na boto kundi yes? I don't think there is a need for me to explain further why I voted yes for this very important piece of legislation. I hope no one will dispute me in this regard. And I know, alam ko, judging from the body languages of everyone in this August uh, hall, that no one is going to vote no for this electoral code, Bangsabor Electoral Code. So dahil doon, my, bet, my vote is yes, yes, yes. Maraming salamat. Thank 
Ismail Rasul. Jajori Raisa. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it has been a privilege for me to be part of the process of building the Bank Samoro. Certainly, the enactment of the Bank Samoro Electoral Code, as what we are about to do, will lead us to that direction, as this will pave the way to the elections of the regular Bank Samoro government in 2025. I was privileged to be part of the peace negotiations between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front in the drafting of the Bank Samoro Basic Law and now in the work of the Bank Samoro Transition Authority. But I want to pay homage to all those who were part of the struggle of the Bank Samoro for the right to self-determination. Mr. Speaker, I also want to greet all the women especially my fellow Bank Samoro women and those who also accompanied us in this journey. A happy International Women's Day. Let's celebrate and be inspired by the quota and the gender policies that are provided in this law so that we can participate more uh, and continue the journey. Mr. Speaker, I vote yes. Jakilan Muslimin, Jikiri Al Bakil, Kahalan Din Martin, Karun Faisal, Lim Jan Antoni, Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Actually, nag-prepare po ako ng mahabang speech, ano po? But after listening to my idol, MP Eddie Ali, I yield to his wisdom. Kasi sabi ng tatay at nanay ko, respect your elders. But seriously, there are Three things I wanted to share today. At tonight, no? First, my sincerest congratulations to the members of the Brown Samoro Transition Authority, both the BTA 1 and the present BTA 2, who are instrumental in the passage, eventual pa passage of this um, important legislative measure. My congratulations as well to our leader, our speaker, Attorney Pangalian Balindong, and of course, uh, our Chief Minister, the Honorable Ahud B. Ibrahim. I also take this opportunity to extend my apology for any excesses or deficiencies in actions or demeanors during the deliberations in the committee as well as in the plenary. Finally, I seek guidance, personal as well as uh, collective, in behalf of uh, this uh, plenary, in behalf of the Bank Samoro Transition Authority. We seek uh, guidance from Allah for continuous blessing, wisdom, as we strive for our better lives for our people, for God, for our country and our region, and for our people. Mabuhay, and I vote yes for BTA 29. Salamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Long Benjamin. Long Don Mustafa. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuhu. Again, I would like to reiterate my commendation to the leaders and officers of the parliament and to the cabinet committee as well as the committee on rules for steering 
the ship towards the enactment of this priority code that will be used as basis as we conduct the first parliamentary elections in 2025. Today is a celebration of uh, Women's Month, and I particularly commend the power of the Moro women to steward uh, that had influence a lot in uh, helping steward the most challenging legislation of the Bangsamoro Parliament. Uh, we all know our uh, women uh, leaders here. Can we just give them a round of applause, please? You know, I have a, a reflection and realization that while we celebrate the 30% inclusion of women in the allocated seats, my realization is that numbers alone do not determine the empowerment of our women. The fact their competence uh, credibility, character, and uh, special way of managing things with high detail, yet with compassion, makes them very effective. And so may they be an inspiration to the, all the other Bangsamoro women out there to, to strengthen their competence and improve their capacity. And let that also be an inspiration to the Bangsamoro government to continue to empower the women and the girls and provide opportunities for them for growth, leadership, and service. Next, the enactment of the Bangsamoro Organic Law, this piece of legislation, is a tes testament to our autonomy as we have crafted an elected process that tailor fits our needs as a people with different ideologies, but yearns for the same progressive future. Though the process was tiring and long, we had to make sure that all policies are inclusive enough to enable the conduct of free, orderly, honest, peaceful, and credible elections reflective of genuine will of the electorate. And that the measure we present turn away from the usual popular personality-based politics and focus on platform and ideology-based political party landscape that the parliamentary system offers. That being said, we also need to make sure that our current policies are airtight and would consider every possible scenario in 2025. On the final note, the heart of a parliamentary system is a free and open regional party system that will allow for the free choice by the people. In conclusion, I am confident that the collective wisdom of this parliament, the electoral code, will be morally sound and legislatively complete as we are gaining, again, a pioneering role that even the national is still trying to pass and enact. With the current moves to amend the 1987 Constitution and talks of possibly adopting a parliamentary system of government on a national scale, we must be proud that the Bangsamoro again is placed under the lens as a model for the success of a parliamentary system. The pressure is upon us to make proof that the rest of the Philippines, that the parliamentary system works at the local level and that the interests of the people are better represented in this system. By ensuring that the next election will be the most inclusive and culturally shaped for the Bangsamoro, may we become champions of political development that all people long for in their own governments locally and internationally. With this, again, I thank the revolutionaries and the Bangsamoro leaders and those who had sacrificed for us to be able to practice a more meaningful autonomy for the better welfare and futures of the Bangsamoro people in particular and the Filipino people in general. I vote a resounding yes. Wabilahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Lorena Jose. Mr. Speaker, may I be allowed to explain my vote? <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My courtesy and respect to our Chief Minister, Ahud Ibrahim, our Speaker, my brother, Tony Alipangalian Balindong, esteemed colleagues, friends of the Bangsamoro guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. 
I thank the Almighty Allah for sustaining me in this long, steep journey for our self-determination and for peace. It has always been an honor to be a part of our historic journey, for I have served in the peace process of the MNLF, peace process of the MILF, in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, and in concluding many of our agreements. It is truly a privilege to have participated in shaping the Public Act 11054. The passage of Bill 29, or our electoral code, firmly puts in place and establish the bedrock of our distinct identity. For we are truly the only parliament in the Philippines. Our demand for new entity in a parliamentary system has not been captured by many, but the passage of the electoral code will establish it. Secondly, the electoral code will define our future. The electoral code will pave the way for the selection of better, brighter leaders to lead our people. For it is in this electoral code that we enshrine a policy for strategic political policy, such as regional political parties, district representation, and an equal representation to all brothers within the Bangsamor. This truly reflects the identity of the Bangsamoro. The Electoral Code will also serve as a model for political transformation. It will transform with the Electoral Code. It will transform not only our political culture, but it will transform the political democracy in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, which can even serve as the model for Philippine democracy. With all this, I think I should thank my colleagues for the leadership of the Bangsamoro government to our chief minister, the leadership of the parliament, and my team colleagues for putting their collective will and their efforts to provide a lasting and meaningful legacy through this electoral code. The future is bright for our children, for it is this electoral code that will assure them that election in the Bangsamoro will not be as hard as it is for many of us who cannot even be elected in our respective constituency because of the an anomaly of political elections. Having said that, and in conclusion, I should thank the Ministerial Committee on the Electoral Code for bringing consultants and people to contribute to the shaping of the draft electoral code. And I should thank the members of the Rules Committee, not because I am one, because I'm an ex-official member, but for giving their fair share and their collective effort to draw the line between unconstitutionality and constitutionality. If there is any unconstitutional provision, it is just an oversight. For the intent of the committee was to make this law not only constitutional, operational, but functional. This is a task difficult to be achieved by weaklings. But I can now say that the Bangsamoro leadership of the parliament, as many will state, is not only qualified, but they are ready to govern. The entire parliament is now put to task to give meaning to this electoral code by your vote, and many of us have voted yes. But truly, the test of this electoral code will come in 2025 when we will put the final name to the bad politics of Philippine democracy. It will be a test for all of us. The result of 2025 in our way of paving the way for an inclusive representation within all of us will certainly show whether we are in the right direction or not. Because the consequence of another anomaly by being selfish to me, to ourselves, and to our organization will not will deter 
the progress of the Bangsamoro. I vote yes because I firmly believe that we have given our intellectual share to this electoral code to assure a better and positive future for the Bangsamoro, not only as a model of governance in the Philippines, but even to other shores outside the Philippines. On that note, again, thank you to the leadership of the parliament, thank you to the Rules Committee, and thank you to all of you, my colleagues. I should congratulate, and we should congratulate all of us for coming out with this electoral code. I vote yes, and I vote yes for this electoral code. Wabi lai tau pi kwalidaya. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Makakoa Abdul Raouf. Siguraduhin natin na naka-on yung mic, ha? Pagkatapos, siguraduhin natin na magandang screen na pag... Kasi kagaya ni Poy kanina na maganda pala sa screen kung naka-screen. So, talagang ang buto ko is yes. Eh, paano naman? Hindi ako bubuto ng yes na sa lahat ng proseso ngayon pa lang ako nakaten. <laughs> Kung mabuto pa ako ng negative, anong tingin niyo sa akin? Di kalukuha na yon. So, talagang buto ko, yes. <laughs> Makapaar Abdullah. Makasalong Marjani. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can I have one minute and 35 seconds? Uh, you only have one minute. Dabilayo na shaitani rajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Salamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Of course, first and for of all, alhamdulillah, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to be part of the enactment of one of the most important measures that will affect the lives of the Bangsamoro. The road to the passage of the proposed Bangsamoro Electoral Code is long and exhausting, and yet members of this august body continue to persevere just to make sure that this code is tailored to the needs of the Bangsamoro. That is why I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate my colleagues, the Committee on Rules, chaired by our no less than attorney, no other than Attorney Shailaiha Dumama Alba and the staff and the Secretariat for all their efforts, sleepless nights and the like in the passage of the BTE Bill number 35 or 29. 29. And we would also like to thank the Bangsamoro people for, the, for their resonating support for this legislation. May Allah make this code an instrument for honest and fair elections an election that would reflect the will of the Bangsamoro and echo the voices of the marginalized. As we enact this code, let us be reminded that in Surah An nur verse 55, Allah has promised those who have believed among you and done righteous deeds that will surely grant them succession or authority upon the earth just as granted to those before them. So my vote is... Also a giant, yes. Thank you very much. May ano kang giant? Also, ha? Makatanong Amrosi? Yes. Maglangit Tarhata. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. My vote is yes. Yes, because the Bangsamoro Electoral Code will provide a space for us to realize our political struggle for our hula and our bangsa. But with reservations, because I believe in a wider and bigger representation and participation of women in the parliament. Maraming salamat po. Malik Hamid. 
Manta whale bailing. Mga fans. Mr. Speaker, may I be allowed to dispense my one-minute speech? Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Indeed, it's a beautiful day to all. To, because today is a very special day for all of us as we celebrate Women's Month. Mr. Speaker, this is my first time to vote for the priority codes and I am very happy that I became part of this historic and memorable event. Mr. Speaker, I want it to be meaningful and worthy to remember and be written in the history of the Bang Samoro. Mr. Speaker, my vote is reflective of the dreams and ideals of all the Bang Samoro for a free, just, honest, credible, and peaceful election in the Bangsamoro region. As a child of war, my vote is dedicated to all those who have sacrificed for these dreams and ideals. The Bangsamoro mart martyrs and patriots, women and children, the elders, and our contemporary leaders. By supporting the passage of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code is an integral part of saying yes to BOL, which identifies it as a priority legis legislative agendum. By voting for the passage of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code, I may be contributing to the promotion of a more democratic and equitable electoral system in the BARM. And that could lead to a greater political participation, representation, and stability in the region. Mr. Speaker, as I observe, there is already an astounding landslide yes vote. Indeed, there is really a spirit of one DTA here. My vote is a big yes. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mastura Ishak. Assalamu alaikum. My vote is yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, however, I, I remain on my stand and position regarding constitutional issues on the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. As I explained during the committee deliberations, plenary deliberations, and the period of amendments, I now look forward to the completion of the task of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority for the conduct of the first elections in 2025 for the Bangsamoro Parliament by passing the bill on parliamentary district seats in the soonest possible time. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Matalam Jaafar Apollo Mikail. Uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, Mr. Chair. Can I have my... Okay. Mr. Speaker, uh, my courtesy to our Chief Minister and to our true speaker. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Uh, Speaker, I am out of words, Mrs. Speaker, because tonight is an historic night for the Bangsamoro, Mrs. Speaker. I can only say my vote is a jumbo yes. Mawalil Amil Bahar. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, my courtesies to the, to, to the leader of the Bank Samoro Freedom Movement, our Chief Minister, uh, Ahud Balawag Ibrahim, our Speaker, Attorney Pangalian Balindong. Uh, may I use my one minute, Mr. Speaker? Um, Mr. Speaker, today we fulfill a mandate, an obligation, a duty that we as members of the Bank Samoro Transition Authority swore an oath to fulfill. 
the enactment of an electoral code that shall ensure the peaceful and democratic transition of power from us to the next set of leaders of the Bang Samoro, from that next set of leaders to those that will come after, from one generation to the next, so long as our flag waves proudly across the Bang Samoro skies. It is a mandate clearly stated in the provisions of the Bang Samoro Organic Law to which our August Assembly owes to ex existence. Higit pa rito, isa itong mandatong nagsasadiwa ng layunin natin para sa Bang Samoro, ang maging isang rehiyon na may matibay na mga, institu na, na mga institusyon, isang rehiyon na may lideratong humihiram ng kapangyarihan sa ating mamamayan, lideratong sasalamin sa kas kasakaranasan, kasaysayan, at adhikain ng ating kapwa Moro. It is this democratic and autonomous vision that, that our forefathers bled for. Mr. Speaker, and so we gather today to fulfill not only the letter, but the very spirit of the BOL. We can all stand proud as a united parliament, and I congratulate all of my colleagues under the leadership of our great speaker and our chief minister. Be that as it may, I regret that our code will not completely reflect the progressive vision that I and many others have articulated over the course of our deliberations. As regards, Mr. Speaker, women rep representatives of political parties, for example, mas maganda sana kung ipapatupad ang isang zipper approach kung saan nagsasalita ng mga lalaki at babaeng nominee ng mga partido. Miski sa ibang mas developed na bansa, ito ang kinikilaya, kinikilalang ideal. This would have paid the way for true gender equality. Pagkakataon sana ito para kilalani ng buong mundo ang Bang Samoro bilang gwaran ng patas na demokrasya. Mr. Speaker, hindi rin tayo naniniwalang makatarungan ang requirement na magkaroon ng 10,000 kasapi ang isang partido para mairehisto. I believe this to be unjustly restrictive, counter-democratic, and counterproductive to the goal of building strong political parties that are based on values and belief systems rather than personalities. Mr. Speaker, I likewise have reservations on having a 4% threshold for political party elections. Despite this, Mr. Speaker, I have to say this. I laud the changes to the provision that now provides for the true will of our people to be reflected through the ballot. Ngayon, may ihahalal na narin natin ang makinatawan mula sa kababaihan, kabataan at iba pang batayang sektor ng lipunan, Mr. Speaker. In this way, Mr. Speaker, the voices of these sectors will be will be heard. Mr. Speaker, we all know how healthy and sometimes heated the debates were, but through the fires of these debates, we forged a consensus on the way forward to this code. Mr. Speaker, we had our challenges. Our capacity was questions. Question, our intentions unfortunately doubted. Concerns were raised regarding our identity as an institution, as a legislative body, as a parliament that is, that is reflective of our people's resolve. All of this we should address more thoroughly in the, in the days to come. But today we have shown the world, our country, and our people that we are capable of coming together. Na pwede tayong mag-usap kahit pa na magkakaiba ang posisyon at opinion. At sa huli ay makabuo ng isang matibay at makatarungang, makatarungang landas tungo sa ating kinabukasan. Mr. Speaker, we have shown democracy at work. Although we may disagree on details, Although we may push and pull, even drag on some particular steps, we are bound by our love for our people and are proudly marching towards a single horizon of justice, inclusiveness, dignity, and progress as one parliament serving as Bang Sabon. Mr. Speaker, allow me also to extend uh, our commendation, my commendation to our floor leader and the chair of the Committee on Rules on for being a sunshine amid the rain. Uh, Ma'am, uh, we've worked before in the former arm, and I know from the time that you took the floor leader role that we can count on you. Thank you for being, for providing a leadership, for being an inclusive partner in the quest for a meaningful electoral exercise in the Bangsamori region, inshallah. My vote is yes, Mr. Speaker. Mendoza Proilin.
ginong speaker ang aking boto po ay isang makakababaihang katutubong malakas na pagsang-ayon nang walang pag-alinlangan sa Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Ang Bangsamoro Electoral Code, Mr. Speaker, ang kauna-unahan sa kasaysayan ng buong bansa at sa Bangsamoro na unang kumilala at nagbigay ng buhay at nagpatibay sa limot ng alaala ng mga katutubong pamayanan, ang primacy ng aming customary law at customary process, kung paano namin pinipili ang aming kinatawan sa parliament. Mr. Speaker, hindi magasto yung aming proseso ng eleksyon dahil yung mga katutubo ay nagkakaroon ng consensus building at tribal assembly. Sinasagot nito ang matagal nang na nating problema sa ating electoral system na kung saan, kung sino yung mga popular lang at kung sino yung mga pilantropi lamang at sino yung may kakayahan lamang ay ang may puwang at poder sa pamamahala. Subalit, ang Bangsamoro Electoral Code, Mr. Speaker, ay inaddress niya ang puwang na ito. Pangalawa, Mr. Speaker, ang Section 22, Letter G, ng Bangsamoro Electoral Code ay, ay mas lalong pinagtibay nito ang natatanging papel ng mga non-Moro Indigenous women sa pagpalakas ng aming linangan o indigenous political structure at malinaw na representasyon sa parliament. Mr. Speaker, napapansin ko lang, tuwing nagpapasa tayo ng mahahalagang batas, inaabot tayo ng takip silim. Katunayan, Mr. Speaker, maghahatang ating gabi na. At dahil dito, Mr. Speaker, Bilang katutubong miyembro ng parlamentong ito at malakas na naniniwala sa aming customary protocol, gusto ko lang magbigay ng pagrespeto sa mga nagbuwis ng buhay ang dahilan kung bakit merong pangalang Bangsamoro. Dahil ang gabing ito ay maari sila ay saksi din sa mga kaganapan sa tanghalang ito. Gabayanawa nila tayo. Muyad, ang aking boto ay isang malakas na oo. Mid timbang, Michael. Thank you, thank you sa mga ngiti ninyo. Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Majority Pro Leader, Members of the Parliament, to make it short, I vote yes to approve the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Before we go further, I notice that we are somewhat forgetting the basic principles as well as the spirit of the Bangsamoro Organic Law. The law that is the reason, reason why we are all here. Let me point out to you the, <clears throat> the preamble of the Bangsamoro Organic Law, affirming their distinct historical identity and birthright to the ancestral homeland and their right to chart their political future through a democratic process that will secure their identity, identity and posterity and allow the genuine and meaningful self-governance. Again, I vote yes. Thank you and masarap. Right. Mid Timbang Tawakal. Audu Billahi Ibn Shaitan Yorajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Our beloved Amir al-Mujahideen, Barm Interim Chief Minister Ahud Balawag Ibrahim, Speaker Pangalian Balindong, Deputy Speaker Majority Floor Leader, 
my fellow honorable members of Bang Samoro Transition Authority, fellow government servants, sa lahat ng ating mga kababayang nakikinig, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mr. Speaker, I am here before you to express my utmost support for the proposed electoral code that has been created for our BARM. This electoral code is one of the BTS priority legislations and a crucial step towards ensuring fair and transparent election the foundation of any democratic society. Mr. Speaker, we should remember that this government of today is a product of a decade struggle and negotiations. Many of our brothers and sisters sacrificed their lives for finding, and finding a genuine lasting peace in our homeland. So therefore, we should be thankful to them because without that sacrifices of our martyrs, we are not standing here today. As the late Amir al-Mujahideen, Sheikh Salamat, Allahu Yarhamu said, and I quote, Our aim is to make the word of Allah supreme, end quote. Mr. Speaker, my vote is yes, and I dedicate my vote to all martyrs, Mujahideen of the Bangsa Muruk people. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Miswari Abdul Karim. Miswari Nurida. Mitmo Grasol Jr. Mr. Speaker. Um, Chief Minister, Speaker, Presiding Officer, mga kasama, mga guests po natin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Mr. Speaker, I will use my one minute for this privilege. Um, Mr. Speaker, narinig ko po ngayong gabi sa atin lahat. Uh, this is something for the history. Pero mukhang sa lahat ng naririnig ko, hindi lang po to history but actually it's her story. So, Mr. Speaker, karamihan po dito, uh, malaki yung uh, pagkilala doon sa karapatang pang, uh, kap, uh, kababaihan. So, Mr. Speaker, hindi, la, hindi man natin na uh, kuha yung zipper system. Uh, nakuha naman natin na uh, at least 30%. Ibig sabihin, pwede pang lumaki. At nakita natin na yung ating kababaihan ay maging parte na ng uh, leadership position ng political party na siyang magiging sentro ng ating baging, bagong political system through the electoral code. At masaya po tayo dito. Mr. Speaker, may mga punto po kung saan nahati yung ating boto, lalong-lalo na dun sa 10,000 uh, required membership at ibang provision sa requirement ng political party at dun sa 4% na threshold. Uh, normal po to Mr. Speaker, dahil bawat isa sa atin dinadala natin yung mga naririnig natin sa ating mga constituency, sa experts, at yung mga uh, pinabilin sa atin during sa public consultation. At sa democratic na process, na-resolve naman po natin, Mr. Speaker. Pero bukod dito, gusto ko pong emphasize, Mr. Speaker, ilan lang to sa mga contentious provision. So ilan lang po to sa hinati natin yung ating house ngayong gabi. Karamihan po ng mga provisions na ating na kamit ay nakamit natin ng consensus. At karamihan dito sa mga provision, mas lalo pang gumanda uh, during sa floor, katulad nung uh, independent candidate na kuha natin, at yung mga iba't ibang improvement na on the floor na ayos pa po natin. So, Mr. Speaker, yung ating mga provision sa ating Bang Samoro Lok Electoral Code, uh, karamihan po dito ay reform and improvement sa ating political party system sa ating electoral system, Mr. Speaker. Uh, kwam po ito, uh, pwede nating sabihin tayo po yung magiging pioneer potentially for the Philippine National Electoral and Political Party System. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, ngayong gabi po, uh, gusto ko pong pasalamatan yung aking classmate, ang ating floor leader, uh, na siyang, pwede nating masabi uh, sa gabing ito, mother of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. 
At dahil po dyan, Mr. Speaker, uh, hindi po tayo pwedeng bumoto ng hindi yes. Munyo Sosain. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alam tanay na kental ilmul hakim mabad. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Our Honorable Chief Minister Ajit Mohd Ibrahim, our Speaker Tony Pangalian Balindu, the Deputy Speakers, to all the respected members of the Parliament, yung congratulations at kumindisyon natin sa ating indefatigable chairman ng Committee on Rules, ni Tony Dumama, at sa kasama niya, at sa lahat ng mga abogado na nagkatarbaho, ang achievement po ng Committee on Rules is an achievement of the Parliament. Achievement ng Parliament is the achievement of the government. It has more determined so that we show to the world that we are capable in charting our own destiny. In the charting of our own government, the Bangsamuru people are united and can aspire for a competent government. My vote is yes. Thank you very much. Uranon Suaib. Pakasim Ubaida. Pak Abdul Wahab. Pangendaman Nabila Margarita. Parkasio Randolph. Mr. Speaker, my exercise, the privilege, one minute statement. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amabad. Our respected Chief Minister, Mr. Ahud Balawag Ibrahim, our speaker, Tony Pangalian Balindong, and of course, our floor leader, Tony Sha Ilaya Dumama Alba, my colleagues in the Committee on Rules, my brothers and sisters in this parliament, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Tonight, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this privilege to chart the political law that will govern and determine the manner how we will exercise our world right to suffrage. Today, we have achieved another success in victory as we did our utmost to craft an electoral code, which is a significant development in fulfilling our right to self-determination. I also would like to express our profound thanks and gratitude to those who have offered their lives or have perished in the struggle to assert our right to self-determination. Indeed, this historic event tonight will serve as monument to show to our people that in the process of crafting the, this law, we adhere to the principle enshrined in the Quran that in the conduct of the affairs of the people, there must be consultation. Wa Amruhum Surah Bainam. There are many reasons for supporting this law. But most of all, we say that we support this law or this electoral code because 
they would like to be in solidarity to all our brothers and sisters who have firmly believed that we shall not rest until the full re realization of our inalienable right to self-determination. Mabuti at magandang yes na yes po sa inyong lahat. Yang Ramon Senior. Our esteemed Chief Minister, Mr. Speaker, and esteemed members of this parliament, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat, Piyok Lungonon. I have been a witness to the exhaustive consultations conducted by the Committee on Rules under our Chairman, Attorney Line, our Majority Floor Leader, Consultations among all constituents of the Bangsamoro to include all sectors and among them our non-Moro indigenous brothers and sisters. This is a clear manifestation, Mr. Speaker, that indeed the Bangsamoro shows a participative, transparent, and inclusive governance true to their advocacy of good and moral governance. As a neophyte in this parliament, I am indeed very happy to be part of this milestone in the approval of this inclusive electoral code of the Bangsamoro. For this, I vote yes. Ramos Diamila, Salindab Said, Salik Ali, Sangki Ali, Sima Umar Yasir, Sima Romeo, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My high respect to the Chief Minister. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. In pursuant of our mandate under the Bangsamoro Organic Law, I am voting for yes to the passage of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Through the commitment and leadership of the chairpersons of the Committee on Rules, Attorney Eleha Dumama Alba, this code went through a rigorous process of legal and political scrutiny from my fellow members in the Committee on Rules. In the past few weeks, series of meetings were conducted by the committee, and I attest to the fact that this code has not only been discussed, but thoroughly and carefully examined. It has presented their views, opinions, and suggestions in order to carefully police each provisions in the, in the code. The provisions that have legal and practical implications were addressed and their consequences were also assessed. Hence, I only have nothing but trust that this code will provide a smooth and peaceful election in the years to come, inshallah. Through this electoral code, each group in our Bangsamoro is represented and given the right to be part of this Bangsamoro government. 
Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Sik Said. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I remember the battle cry of the Mujahideen who are martyr in their struggle. And I will repeat, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The enactment of this Bangsamoro electoral code is one of the fruit of the sacrifices of our Mujahideen who struggled for almost 50 years. And still we are now in the process of high-level negotiation with the involvement of the international community. Para po ay tatlong magkakapati dito, the intervention of the international community, nandito na sila ngayon, and the national government, and the Bangsamoro people. Parang magkakapatid na bunso ang Bangsamoro pero nakikita natin na still malnourished. Kaya kailangan natin yung mga vitamin na pagtulong-tulungan natin dito sa guberno, sa guberno natin. We are still in the negotiation na kailangan natin itong mga legal mind Nakikita natin po na sila talaga yung naghihirap. Kailangan natin yung mga technocrats. Kailangan natin yung isang direction na kailangan natin yung mga leader na mayroon silang isang direction. So, hindi ko na patatagalin. So, alhamdulillah, I vote for yes. Salamualaikum. Silongan Aida. Auzubillahiminashaitanirajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My courtesy to our beloved uh, Chief Minister and to the Speaker of the Parliament at sa lahat ng uh, magagandang lalaki at mga babae na member ng Parliament. Unang-una, ito ay pagpatupad sa mandato natin bilang mga member ng parlamento na nakalagay sa Bangsamoro Organic Law. Pangalawa, ito ay pagtupad sa pangako ng ating mahal na Chief Minister sa ating mahal na Pangulo nung kumunta dito sa atin na ipapasa natin ito within the first quarter. Alhamdulillah, natupad natin at hindi natin napasubo ang ating mahal na Chief Minister. Ang pagpatupad natin in its true spirit, kung may patupad natin itong Bangsamoro Electoral Code, ay posibleng maging modelo tayo ng ibang rehiyon sa buong bansa. Lalo pat ngayon pinag-uusapan na sa Kongreso at Senado ang pag-amienda sa Konstitusyon. Ang buong mundo ay nagbabantay kung paano natin ipatupad ang pinagkaloob sa atin na otonomiya at ang pag-implement ng genuine and principled political party. Ang huli ay ang aking pagbati sa aking mga magagaling na mga kasamahan na mga abogado na pinamunuan ni uh, Attorney Shia Ilaiha Dumama at ang kanyang mga deputy at mga kasama nila na naggumalugad sa COMELEC para lang masiguro na ang ating maipasa na batas ay wala nang sasalungat nito, insya Allah. Ang aking pagboto sa uh, batas na to ay isang malaking malaking oo. Maraming salamat. <coughs> sinulinding sinulinding kadel 
Sulaiman Ali. Tago Paisalin. May I ask? The gentleman from Lano Del Sur is recognized. Maraming salamat, Speaker. Gusto ko sana magsalita lang ng 15 seconds. Kung, kung pwede sana copy-paste na lang yung sinabi ng mga kasama ko para 15 seconds lang. But anyway, uh, Speaker, uh, isang magandang malapit na mag magating gabi sa ating lahat. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi tala wabarakatuh. My due courtesies and respect to our Chief Minister, Awud Balawag Ibrahim, to our legitimate speaker, Attorney Pangalian Balindiung, to our presiding officer, and of course, to my colleagues in the, <laughs> to my colleagues in the members of the parliament, and to our guests and our staffs, who sacrifice their time in staying and witnessing the history in our parliament. <clears throat> of course, Mr. Speaker, my commendation to the officers and members of the Committee on Rules, aided by our pro leader, Attorney Laia Dumama Alba, at ang kanyang kasama, I call them the four lady mosquitoes. Ang kanyang kasama, si Minister Mosquitoes. The four lady mosquitoes. MP Raisa Diajuri, MP Ana Tarata Basman, MP Miriam Arnaldo, of course, ang kanilang leader, si MP and floor leader Dumama for spearheading the committee on rules as sila po talaga ang nag-sacrifice ng pagpasa ng batas na ito. I condemn, I commend them a lot, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am voting today for years. Not I am voting for a simple law that we are approving. I am voting yes because I am voting for history. This is the first time, Mr. Speaker, since the creation of the autonomous region in our country that the autonomous region area will be crafting an electoral code for the Muslims in our country. Sa kaunaon ng pagkakataon, tayo po ay gumawa ng batas ng electoral code na naayon sa ating kultura at reliyon. This is a major, major transformation from arm to barm. Kasi itong electoral code ay wala sa 6734, wala sa 9054. Dito lang nakasal sa 1154. Ang local government code, education code, Civil Service Code and other codes, administrative code, ay nakasaad sa 1944. Ito ay isang malaking pagbabago sa paggawa ng batas dito sa autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. That's why, Mr. Speaker, I sacrificed and I waited and I attended actively in our meetings because I want to become a part of history in this parliament, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, ang paggawa natin ng batas na ito ay isang malaking step, is, is a big step in our quest for self-determination because slowly our quest for self-determination will be slowly realized by the enactment of this code. Wabilay Taufik Walidaya Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Wabarakatuh. I vote a Jurassic yes, Mr. Speaker. Tan Nabil. Jurassic means old, ha? Jurassic means old.
May I be be given the privilege to? Yeah, you have one minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. My courtesy to our Chief Minister Ahud Balawag Ibrahim, our uh, <clears throat> beloved Speaker Attorney Pangalian Balindong, Speaker of the Parliament. Our senior minister who initially started this in the cabinet, the cabinet bill, which he shepherded with his uh, colleagues in the cabinet. The members of the Committee on Rules spearheaded by its uh, energetic and uh, uh, <clears throat> intelligent uh, Floor leader, Attorney Laihad Alba Dumama, Dumama Alba, the Vice Chairman, Attorney Minister MP Attorney Raisa Jajuri, Attorney Anna Basman, Attorney Marian Arnaldo, the members of this BPA. I will join the chorus of commendation. Uh, in congratulating uh, our floor leader for a job well done. Congratulations. I have, many of us have expressed our own sentiments, disagreements, and maybe some discord in terms of appreciating the provisions, different provisions of this electoral code. <coughs> But we were minded by the fact that we are to pass this in, in a specific uh, time timeline as a commitment, as a mandate in the organic law, being one of the priority codes and the, the instruction of the president appealing to us to pass this code. Our chief minister has committed and true to his word, with our support to his leadership, we have now the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. I have expressed some disagreements on some of the provisions, but without discord, I don't think, and some dissonance, we will not appreciate the unity that we have achieved in crafting the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. We have given our, we were given our spaces and we were given our time to, to express whatever is in our minds. But we cannot control the majority. The majority has their own reason for insisting on some of the provision. But nonetheless, I am most contented because we have heard that that we have considered all the parameters for this to become an effective law because it is constitutional, it is in accordance with national laws, in accordance with the Bangsamoro organic law. We have listened to the articulation of the several sectors. We have given importance to the culture and tradition of the Bangsamoro and its non-Moro IPs. We have listened to the advocacies of women and the youth. We have consulted the COMELEC, the LGUs, the NGOs, and the CSOs. Nothing more remains but to consolidate all this and express it in one instrument, this legislation, a milestone in our lives. And I am happy to be part of this. Thank you very much. I vote yes. Osman Ajipar. Mr. Speaker, may I exercise my thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala asafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahabi azmain. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When the floor leader required us as to its committee that we wish to join, I deliberately 
intended to join the Committee on Rules for this code. For this, Madam Floor Leader, Attorney Laiha Dumama Alba, my sincere appreciation for including me as member of the Committee on Rules. I would like to commend my fellow members of this committee and generally the members of the parliament for reaching this far tonight and of course commendation to the floor leader for steering the committee to, our, to where we are now this evening. It is such an honor and privilege for me as part of this historic August body. I am accepting the challenge to represent the most marginalized sector as I am from the Basulta region. Yes, I have some frustrations on some of my expectations were not met in this code. However, since this is just a man-made law and a progressive at that, hence not a perfect law, yet for the love of Bang Samoro to borrow the uh, quotes from my Utu Amir, MP Amir, for the love of Bang Samoro, I must submit to the wisdom and compromises made through in the process of enacting this law. Therefore, without reservation, Mr. Speaker, I am voting for a sounding yes for this Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Otto Basir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My courtesy and respect, Chief Minister, sa ating Speaker, Deputy Speaker, ang ating mga kasamaan sa Parlamento. Uh, Unang-una, ang boto ko ay yes. Dahil uh, sa kabila nung uh, ilang buwan lamang na sumikap ang Parlamento para maipasa, maipasa itong electoral code ay sa awan ni Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ay isang karangalan po sa akin na bagong membro ng parlamento na naging kasama at kasapi sa pagbasa ng electoral code sa Barm region. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, uh, ito ay nararapat at tadhana na ito talaga sa kabila ng uh, pagsusumikap ng mga kasama natin sa committee sa panguna ng aming uh, butihing uh, floor leader, attorney Alba. Uh, sa isang pagbugay at uh, pagsaludo sa iyong napakagandang proseso at napakagandang dinaanan sa ating mga kasamaan. Bilang committee member ng rules ay taus puso po ako nagpapasalamat kay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at sumusuporta sa lahat ng mabuting hangarin ng Bangsamuro government. May vote is yes. Mabuhay ang mga kababayan, mabuhay ang mga kalalakian, mabuhay tayong lahat. Wabilahi topic wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Oi Oyud Siti Fahani, Yakub Muhammad, The Secretary General, can you now read the results of the vote? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi wa bihi nasta'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mr. Speaker, we have now the result 
of the nominal voting of the BTA Parliament Bill Number 29 entitled an act providing for the Bangsamoro Electoral Code of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. With 64 yes votes, zero no votes, and zero abstention. Mr. Speaker, the yes votes have it. With 64 yes votes, zero no votes, and zero abstention, BTA Bill Number 29, an act providing for the Bangsamoro Electoral Code, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, is approved on, ten, on third and final reading. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Mr. Speaker, I move to adjourn the session until the regular session, March which 13. is on March 13. Session is adjourned until March 13, 2023. We will now proceed with the ceremonial signing. And the Speaker of the Parliament to come up stage to, uh, to perform the, the ceremonial signing of BTA Bill Number, BTA Bangsamoro Autonomy Act Number 35. Yung draft. Sana yung draft. Draft. Sana yung draft nila. Yawan na rin niya. Yawan na rin. Kasi may ilay mga pamirman. Ida sana lang. Juan, so ina kan kawatay before the the drafts are written are signed we will hear a, a simple message from the chief minister oh. Uh, okay. Uh, build a government worthy of the name Bangsamoro. And along with such commitment is the promise to enact an electoral code that would help pave the way for a more peaceful and democratic elections in the region, participated by genuinely principled political parties. Indeed, Today's enactment of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code is a significant step towards realizing such a promise. I am optimistic 
that with a series of consultations with the stakeholders and experts and with the thorough deliberations from the committee to the plenary sessions. We have a Bangsamoro electoral code that we can call and be proud of, inshallah. I would also like to take this opportunity to show my utmost respect and appreciation to all who have contributed to the passage of the Bangsamoro electoral code from the technical, legal, and secretariat support staff to the cabinet and to my colleagues in the parliament, may your hard work be rewarded by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth priority code that we have enacted. Let us build on this positive momentum to finish the remaining priority codes and other important legislations as soon as possible. Remember that we still have the local governance code and the revenue code as our the among our priority codes and also the indigenous people's uh, code. Let us continue to serve the Bangsamoro with pure hearts and sincere intentions. Before I end my, uh, I just want to share a, a, a bit of information maybe everybody will appreciate. First is that we were able to have a breakfast meeting with the, uh, with the Prime Minister of uh, Malaysia last March 1 in Manila after his meeting with the president. His brief information and, uh, is that they have a separate talk with the president about the Bangsamoro and the Bangsamoro and the president uh, committed, uh, express his commitment to continue the implementation of the peace agreement. Uh, the prime minister also expressed the commitment of his government and the people of Malaysia in continuing their support to the Bangsamoro people and the peace process. We are also happy that we were able to attend the first summit, Sharia summit in Cagayan de Oro, national summit of the uh, first national summit of Sharia in Cagayan de Oro, uh, Cagayan de Oro city last uh, March uh, 5 and 6. We were very, uh, it was a very fruitful uh, summit and it, it sent a message that Sharia will, will, will not only be implemented, will not, uh, the Sharia court will not only be implemented in the Bangsamoro, but in the, in the entire country, there will be Sharia courts. <clears throat> so we are, I have also a chance of whispering to uh, this, uh, uh, the uh, primary uh, uh, of the Sharia, uh, of the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice regarding the case against the BOL. His simple response, I just asked him what, what is now the situation of the case filed against the BOL. His simple answer is, we are taking care of that. So don't worry, Chief Minister. So that is my, uh, uh, just a simple information for you. Alam kung pagod na kayo, now we are on the 12, 12 o'clock already. So, hanggang dito na lang, wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Congratulations to ating lahat.